Welcome, Jessica, to your session zero. Thank for you. Saint. <laughs> um, so to open up, you start where you have been for the last couple of nights, the Devil's Thirst, a tavern in the um, in the uh, clothier quarter of the capital city, Thassa. Okay. Um, you enter the Devil's Thirst after a long day of searching for your sister, as we have discussed in your backstory, um, without any progress made. Uh, it's starting to get very frustrating for you. You've been doing this now for a number of weeks, and you've had zero information. So it's starting to get, starting to feel heavy on your shoulders that you aren't making any progress. Um, you have talked to Shantra. She's a magenta-skinned uh, tiefling. Um, uh, seems to have taken a liking to you after she's heard your song, uh, at, at, earning you room and board here at this tavern. Uh, and when you enter, she goes, Oh, dearie, please, I, I've, I've set up a job for you. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, thank you so much. I was telling you about Willie over at the Wet Whistle. Uh, yes. Yes. So I've talked with him, and he has agreed to set up an audition for you this evening. Oh, okay. No. Auditions sounds a bit scary. Oh, you've got this, dear. I've heard you sing. You are quite incredible. Well, I'm, I'm not used to hearing that, so thank well, you. I promise you, I'm just the first of many to come. Now, keep this in mind about Willie. I told you, he likes to talk. So, if you sing pretty, which I know you will, he'll be more than happy to offer you information, and you won't have to pay for it. Okay. I will, um, I'll do my best. Dearie, I hope you find her. I, and I, I, I have to say, it's been a pleasure having you as a bard in my tavern. You are welcome back any time. Thank you, I, I really appreciate that. And with, when, if, when I find my sister, I will be sure to bring her back. I'm sure you'd love her. There, that's the confidence you need to keep close to you as you travel, my dear. Thank you. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Thank you, Saint. Be safe. Rem don't forget about me! I won't! Uh, and as you exit, um, as you've been in the tavern, the weather has changed a bit. Um, and overhead up here, rain clouds, thick. Um, the sun is setting, uh, and you know that you've got a little bit of a walk to Willie's Wet Whistle down by the port, by the docks. Um, so it's yeah. on the same, it's all in Thassa. It's all in Thassa, yeah. This so this is the big city that we're in? Yeah, it's the capital city of the Northern Island. Okay. All sorts of different types of, uh, of uh, life here. Um, tiefling, Asimar, uh, lots of the animus, a lot of Herengan, um, all the different types of Ursaka, Kanusk, they all seem to be mixing in with the dem with demi humans like dwarves and elves and Genasi, Genasi oh. uh, uh, goblins, orcs, hobgoblins. It, it appears very much that this city is a melting pot of the entire oh. North Island. And because Saint is from places in the North Island that yes. are much less inhabited, mm -hmm. right. the, I the, imagine the Hanging Garden is where you're from. Yes. The Hanging Garden, yeah. yes, and also the the Willowsep tribe. I imagine she's not seen these, a lot of these kinds of folks before. A, a lot of them, no, no. Uh, you're, you're, you have seen some uh, wood elves, obviously, in your life, being half wood elf yourself, uh, and you know very much of the Lux uh, and uh, the the Luxodian peoples. Um, you're familiar with Tabaxi and uh, and Leonin as you traveled south from the Hanging Gardens through Pridura. Um, but outside of that, no, a lot of these, they are, you are as new to them as they are to you. Yeah, you definitely get some looks from people, especially because you're not pure Luxodon. Right. Okay. Luxodon, pure Luxodon wouldn't get as many looks because people know yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, they would probably still get some looks. Right. Yeah. yeah they they would still get some looks because they're not everywhere. But it's not much of a distance to have a, a, an elephant person where when there are bear people and dog people. So, right. But having an elephant person who looks like you, who is also clearly part elf, uh, that does get looks from yeah, everyone. for sure. Okay, so as she's walking, uh, Saint is, is seven feet tall. She's very, she, I imagine she's taller than a lot of folks in this town. Yes. And uh, so The Ursaka, not so much. The Ursaka pretty much keep 
Most of them keep about your height. Okay. Even the black, even the alpine or saco, which are like black bears, they tend to be just as tall. Okay. Yeah. Well, she's still kind of slouching down mm. as to not draw so much attention. Her her war hammer is is stashed tightly to herself. Do you cover yourself at all, or are you um, just keep it slouched? No, she's just she's just trying to blend in a little more. Mm. If she can at all. Yeah. And uh, despite you slouching and, and trying to keep yourself, people sort of move out of your way. I don't know if you've ever experienced that as a tall person. People just sort of get out of your way when you come barrel. At least that's what I experience. <laughs> I don't know y'all. Uh, and maybe I'm the one that's closest to elephant people. But uh, 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 Well, I think that Saint will not be unused to that because when she grew up with the elves, they were, they were often giving her side eyes and parting ways for her because she was... So, so big. Yeah. So as you travel towards the port, um, again, all sorts of different people kind of giving you, side, you know, some are more obvious than others. Some just sort of side glance you as they walk by. Uh, some stare straight at you. No one seems to call out at you or to stop you. Just that you're a curiosity as you pass by. And There's she, no disgust. It doesn't feel judgy. It just, you notice the eyes. Okay. And she, she's giving... Timid smiles, friendly smiles at folks as she's walking by. And those folks, they sometimes are caught unaware that you noticed, and a few of them will give a small wave back. But it's mostly they're wanting to keep uh, out of, they don't want any more uh, attention than you do in these situations. So, mm. um, as you get closer and closer to the, the port, um, the streets are pretty clean. Um, stone cobbleways in some places sand has uh over you know in the ruts of the stone cobbleways especially as the closer you get to the port um but the, the streets are clean there's no trash in the streets uh there doesn't seem to be any kind of homelessness feels uh not, there aren't really any many unhoused individuals uh in which you know you never really being in a big city probably wouldn't notice even if there were but you can tell that people seem to be fairly okay here they take are taken care of. Uh, it seems the area is very well, not well off, but not poor either. Uh, as you make yourself make your way to the docks, uh, it starts to change more to like fisherman style uh, barrels and nets on the side of the road uh, that are that are holding salted fish uh, and a variety of goods. Um, you're, it's later in the day, so a lot of these places are, are closing up or have already closed up as you pass by. Um, and as you turn the corner to leave uh, the official, where the area of the Clothier district uh, starts, ends, and you get to the port, uh, that's when you see it again. The incredibly tall uh, liber uh, li li Statue of Liberty sized statue of the Mother of Storms. What? A cowled woman. You saw this coming into the city uh, yeah. from a distance. It's so tall. But it's out in the port. Uh, it's turned away from you. So all you see from this angle is a cowled woman w with a cowl over her head uh, s pointing and staring out at the, uh, at the ocean. But as the sun sets behind her in the distance, um, it's a beautiful sight. The, you can sort of see the storm clouds in the distance that have become normal to you. Um, they're far off in the sea, but there's clearly some sort of roiling storm in the distance that prevents you from seeing anything anywhere further. And you can only see it now because the sun seems to be setting behind those clouds uh, and it shines in a, in, a, in a beautiful green light in this particular um, sunset. And as the sun sets, rain begins to fall. And this storm is ever present. It's been there since you've ever seen uh, any coast that you've ever been to. There is a storm in the distance. Um, that is a normal thing. That's everybody has accepted that, and that's part of what happened about three hundred years ago when the animists themselves became uh, were founded. Um, so it's a it's it's a strange thing because it's relatively new, but not to you or to anyone who's less than three hundred years old because it's been since they were born. And to the people of the North Island, at least to my knowledge, yes. is there varying levels of fear or comfort comfortability with this storm? It's How is more it? like they respect it. Okay. They respect the storm and they respect how dangerous the seas are. And the the storms themselves are almost like a like a like a blanket. And they do wax and wane. It's not always a torrential downpour and it's not always, you know, just barely sprinkling. It's it's one of those things where, like, uh, 
like if you live in a coastal town, like especially a, a northern coastal town, uh, it's not uncommon for those small little storms to blow in and blow out. But he's right. When you look out across the ocean, there's legitimate storm clouds with thunder and lightning. Right. And that's why fishermen never go out past the bay. The bay is safe. They can fish in the bay. You can swim in the bay. But outside of the bay, out in the oceans, the Vanwa and the Rasa oceans, it's just pure storm. And in the port, there are no large ships. Yeah. It's all small fishing vessels. Yeah. Um, no more than four or five people can fit on any one of even the largest boats. And that's all she would have ever seen as well. That's all she would. It would be normal okay. to her. It's absolutely normal. Okay. And normal to the people of this uh, area. It's not normal to, uh, if you were to talk to elves or people who live longer than 300 years, but you don't have a whole lot of that experience, experience yeah. yet with that. So, um, yeah, and as you get closer, uh, sure enough, uh, as you're watching the sunset, um, Nearby, you hear a, a, a door open and a what looks like a drunk uh, human, or excuse me, drunk um, uh, gnome, stumble out of the, the inn. And from in, inside, you hear, Freedom, come and find me. Freedom, please come and find me. Where did I, I did not write this down. Oh my God. <laughs> So Apologies. she she hears this this song and I, I guess she would assume that this would be where she needs to go, right? Yes. The, the wet whistle. The, this is as you look over the door. Sure enough, there's a there's a wooden sign that says the wet whistle. Okay. And from inside is where you hear the, the this singing coming from. So she turns to the the drunk gnome mm -hmm. and she says, "Excuse me, um, is this the <gasps> the wet whistle?" Just come from there. Uh, do you need any help? Uh, uh, Are you sure I can help you? I'm going home. Please, Leave me. Let me let uh, me escort you. Come, uh, come, come. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, and he pushes you off. I just gotta get home. Well, at least take my water. Take it. Take my water. Please, please drink it. And he downs it, and you can see he's very thirsty. Um, and he kind of shakes off a little bit. The water seems to refresh him a little bit. And he he uh, opens his eyes, and he oh. You feel a bit better. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, do you need one? You can have it. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll keep this. you I've never seen someone like you before. <laughs> I've been getting that a lot, actually. And you hear inside, um, Freedom, why don't you come and find me amongst the rabble and the few? So she turns to look in, into the door and turns back to the gnome. If... And he seems to be already stumbling off. Have a good night. Be safe. No, thank you. And he he, walk, he wanders off into the fading darkness. Um, and yeah, from inside you hear is the sounds of people drinking and this song that you've heard. Okay, so she timidly steps through the door. I don't know that she, I don't think she's been in that many taverns beyond the Devil's Thirst. The Devil's Thirst, yep, is pretty much one of your first taverns that you've gone into, and even that was a little overwhelming the first time you went in. And that one was smaller than this one? It was one. smaller, a bit darker. The the It's a clothier region, so there's not a lot. Fishermen tend to drink more than those who make clothes. Okay. Uh, so it, it seems to be a little bit more of a nice place that people go to eat dinner, but they don't drink like this place. Okay. So as you as you breach the doors, uh, the rain behind you picks up, uh, now falling in large uh, drops, um, and the wind begins to blow as well through the streets. Um, but as you breach, it's warm in here, and it smells of cinnamon. Um, at at the table uh, near the stairs where they go up into what you can only assume is where the rooms are, there's a bar, and behind the ta uh, behind the um, bar you see a, a, a halfling. Um, uh, sharp features, handsome, uh, and seems to be busy uh, at the bar. He's got mutton chops, and there's a tattoo of an albatross on the side of his neck. Uh, on the stage, uh, directly opposite of the bartender, uh, appears uh, what it appears to be a very sharp-featured, dark beard, dark bearded, sapphire blue-eyed air genasi, and they are singing. 
Freedom, won't you come and find me? Amongst the rabble and the few, I've searched high and low, and you have never found me. Freedom, won't you come and find me? Amongst the rabble and the few, adventure comes, but you have never found me. Uh, and as his song begins to, to end, uh, you see people start to notice you at the door. Make a perception check for me. Okay. There's some applause from some drunken sailors, fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, that was a three, but let me just really quick check my, yeah, uh, check uh, check my uh, perception, perception here. Um, so it's a soul of six. So you are enraptured by this experience. It's, it's gone from this cold, rainy outside helping a drunk who's stumbling home in the dark to this warm, aired, uh, cinnamony uh, experience with such a beautiful voice. You are caught. It is huge eyes. You even forget a moment that you're standing there and not moving. Uh, and s soon the bartender uh, locks eyes with you. Are you all right? Hi. Hello there. I'm uh, Willie. This is my place, the oh, Wet Whistle. Oh, Willie. Hi. Hi. I was looking for you. Um, I was sent by... You were looking for me? Yes, I was sent by Shantra. She said to find Willie oh, at the Wet Whistle. I, seems I found the right place. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Our business is a bit slow, but we're doing all right. Oh, well, I've just... Uh, I've lost my, wa my water... That's... Is, I could pay for water if you... If you... Water? What, what, water? What, Would what? you like a pint? We don't have any water here. There's a rain barrel out back. Uh, sure, I'll have a pint. All right, great. Uh, I, I don't even know are how you, much gold Are you going to has. perform? <laughs> oh, uh, well, if I... Chandra sent you. I, I... Yes. I... Well, if there's any room, I don't know how I could possibly follow that. That was... Well, quite... he's just finishing for the night. So if you'd like to sing. There's no one else after after them to... You look around the bar and there's like three or four drunken fishermen. Here you go. Oh. On the house, if you're going to perform. Oh, well, thank I you. fancy bards. I'm... Not in the way you're thinking, mind you. Oh, I wasn't... I don't know even... I don't know what you mean. Good. Oh, she takes You're not from here, are you? No, I'm from the Hanging Gardens. Oh, mm -hmm. now what brings you down here from the Hanging Gardens? Um, That's a long ways away. Yes, it's been quite a journey. It's uh, been quite hard, to be honest, but keeping my chin held high. Um, I'm looking. You came down here by yourself? Yes. <sighs> That's impressive. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I'm sure you're quite impressive yourself. Well, I haven't gotten outside of Thassa for quite some time. Well, I'm, um, I'm looking for my sister. Your sister? Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't want to bother you for the details. Does Especially she look like you? Exactly like me. As you ask that question, uh, the bar door seems to swing open uh, as, and it draws both of your attention towards the door. And sure enough, outside, the, the wind and the rain has picked up uh, and it's starting to appear like a full downpour. Uh, and uh, as you look back, um, the bard that was singing at the stage uh, moves up to the bar and says, it looks like it's a heck of a storm out there. I'll be right back. And then he hops off the stool because he's literally on a stool to serve up over the top of the bar. And you see him grab a couple planks, hammer and nails, puts the nails in his mouth. And he walks over to the windows like he's done this a hundred times. <laughs> and he just starts banging away <laughs> on the planks, nailing the boards into place, getting used to yet another story. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, and the bard says, oh, hello, my name is Thatton. What might I call you? Thatton. Uh, hello. Uh, pleased to make your acquaintance. I'm Saint. Saint? What a beautiful name for a beautiful specimen. Oh. Uh, well, I, I don't really know what specimen means, but thank you. And you are... Your voice is 
beautiful as well. Oh, thank you. Did I hear correctly that you're a bard? Uh, no, no, not not quite. I I do like to sing. Chandra Center. Oh, Chandra. I love Chandra. Chandra, that's what I said. Yes, I love her. She's, you know I love her. She is quite the lady. Did she treat you nice? She did, yes. Of Very she. lovely lady. Yes, lovely lady. Like my sister, in a way. Um, I was wondering, you say you're not a bard. I sense a bit of um, hesitation. Would you do me a favor? I would love to hear a voice such as yours. I've heard the Luxodians sing. Oh, well, I, I, I will sing, but I'm sorry to be uh, the bearer of bad news that I don't quite carry the, the same voice as my kin. Oh, I would be surprised if you did. That's why I want to hear you sing. Okay, then. She glances back over at Willie. He's just finishing banging the last board into place. And then you notice him pushing. It's kind of taking all of his strength to push the door closed. And he throws the latch down. But don't suppose anyone else is going anywhere tonight. I don't think so. I. Uh, they're going to sleep there, as you well know. That's true. That's true. <laughs> what was the, the bard's name again? Or the guy? Uh, the, the, the person, sorry. He called himself Thatton. Thatton. Mm -hmm. His pronouns are he, him. Okay. Yes. Thatton. As far as you can tell, it okay. seems to be him. Okay. Um, okay. His beard seems to be—it's uh, black, but it's when you when you get when he gets closer and you have a conversation with him, his beard is dark gray and it sort of on the edges, like where my beard is, is wispy, sort of just airy, almost like smoke on the water. Ooh. Um, so it's it, it's a little distracting. It's very—you're not really it's. It's almost like you're, you're both kind of wide-eyed at each other because you've never really seen an air genasi before this close, and he's clearly never seen you, what you are up close. So genasi would be people who I've heard of, right? Yeah, okay. but they tend to come from the southwest corner of the North Island. Right. So they're pretty far away from the Hanging Garden, right. so you maybe would have heard of them, but not actually... It's dangerous to travel on the North Island. It's raw. It's primal. There's storms. Things want to eat you. Mm -hmm. So that's why he reacted the way he did when you were like, oh, I walked down here from the Hanging Gardens. He's like, you walked by yourself. <laughs> by yourself? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that automatically tells him a little bit about you, that if you could do that by yourself, that you have some power to you, yeah. that you're able to keep you're yourself tough. safe. You're right. Yeah. You're not a pushover. And other folks are carrying weapons in here as well. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. The bard, rape, two rapiers by his side. It's clear that he's well armed. Okay. Uh, and was only singing. No, no instrumentation. Just his voice. Okay. Um, and he says, um, "Willie, if it's all right with you, I'd like her to take my final spot." Well, I don't know. We're so busy here, as you can see. <laughs> let's let's ask the peanut gallery, shall we? <laughs> sure. Hey, peanut gallery. What would you think of a new bard taking my place? Right. That's kind of the response I was uh, expecting. Well, the stakes are mm -hmm. uh, low, it seems, for this. Indeed. Whew. Wow us with your voice. Okay. Olivia. She uh, sets her warhammer and her shield up against the side of the stage and walks up. Brushes off the a bit of dust off Make of her. Just another perception check as you walk away. Okay. Eleven. Uh, you notice as you walk away, and his he turns to come back to the bar. There seems to be some sort of necklace underneath his shirt. The bartender seems to have mm. a gold chain um, with that, a little medallion that uh, disappears underneath his his tunic. His manly, hairy, halfling chest. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the halfling? The, the bartender's bartender. a halfling. Oh, this is the yeah. bartender. Not oh, the oh. No, not okay. the okay. The bartender. Draw a little arrow there. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so she... she. He hops up onto his onto the stool next to the genasi, and they both kind of lean back, and they're just watching. As, as he leans back, she wants to try to figure out what's on his necklace. See if she can Sure. Uh, uh, make an investigation check. Okay. 
Oh, I have a... Oh, that's a two minus you, one. You're rolling awesome, Jessica. Um, <laughs> you try, you, 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 you're trying to get a view of, of what uh, is on his chest, but you see the bard kind of lean in over, over his body and whisper something in his ear. And it kind of it covers up what you were trying to see. Okay. Uh, You've got this. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Saint. Hello, Saint. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, she hasn't. She hasn't done anything I, yet. I'm, I'm warming Give her a chance. Right. Uh, and you can see she's she's visibly nervous. This is she's had a little bit of experience at the Devil's Thirst doing this, but. She's been overlooked her whole life on singing. She does not uh, know how to perform in front of people. Uh, <clears throat> okay, um, I don't really have much prepared, uh, I, but I am. Um, I, I, I sing something that makes you feel good. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I did sing this after I broke my leg recently. <laughs> Wow. Uh, she got down here on a broken leg. Can you imagine that? By herself. That's what she said? Hmm. I, you think she's lying? I don't know. She does carry a warhammer. Right. And she's four Seven times... Seven foot tall. Four times the size of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I will also be doing this without instruments... One step, and then another. Blessed are those who wander, branching, reaching. Depths of the forest are calling. The well-worn path will end before the journey has begun. Eyes to the sky, and you might find your way. Let fear ignite a light, and shine another light today. Uh, that's it, that's all I have. I... I've never heard a voice such as hers. Especially coming from a Luxodon. I... I have chills. I can feel them in me, in my jawbones. And uh, the bard stands up and... Incredible! There was a long <laughs> silence before that happened, so she was like, Oh, God. <laughs> uh, and as the, as the uh, clapping begins to die, the, the door begins to rattle against the wood oh, dear. more and more. As the wind outside... It's going to be a big one. And he pops off of his stool and runs over to the door and you see him looking at it and then he walks over and grabs his hammer. I only have two more nails! And he starts hammering another board into the actual door to kind of keep it shut. Um, Come drink with us, girly. That's all you want? Okay. That's, that was beautiful. I don't think the rest of these met. And as you were singing, the rest of them seemed to be sort of falling asleep. Uh, from their drunkenness. Uh, um, they were definitely enthralled for sure. by what you were doing. They're also just... And as you as you finished your song, they sort of... That enthrallment sort of, sort of disappears and they begin to get a little in their cups, as you might say. Well, thank you. She picks up her, her Warhammer and her shield again. Thank you for, for letting me perform. Uh, uh, and the bard picks up your pint and says, To you. Uh, thank you. Picks uh, up his own and... Cheers. Cheers. Willie, get over here. <laughs> Cheers. Well done. Oh. Room and board well earned, if you ask me. Oh, I, of course. I, I, I promise the more time you give me, the, be the better I'll get. I'm just, I'm so nervous. I haven't really done this much before, but I, 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 never mind. You'll get your song legs. That just takes time. And with a voice like yours, you won't even have to try. Have you, you you've been to the Devil's Thirst. Yes, I, I, I was performing there for a, for a few days. And how did they react there? Um, good. Uh, I think they liked it. Hmm. You 
genius. They, they like do. the moody stuff they over do. there. They do. Also, she appears unique. I've never seen anyone like her before. Yes, I have been getting that a lot. Mm. <clears throat> well, what kind of music she do they... She said she was searching for her sister? Yes. Uh, her name is Sansa. Sansa. And she looks like you. Exactly like me, yes. I haven't seen you before. That's why I came up. You are a sight to behold. I heard a few whispers on the wind. Uh, and as he says wind, again, the, the, the it, it stays held, but the wind you can hear whistling through the door cracks outside. And there's a sort of a rattle as if the nails are keeping the door. He just sort of leans up against the door as if, like, he's this little halfling man is going to be strong enough to hold the door. Can I help you? And she she leans her whole body up against it as well. Sure, I sure. Can, I can I can be of help. And as soon as she w- pushes puts her yeah. weight on the door, yeah, the whistling stops and the door seems to hold. Well. At this point, because there's been some jostling and moving around, the uh, necklace spills out between his little hairy chest on his jerkin that he's wearing uh, and you can clearly see it uh, and there's a little um, uh, windy cloud on the medallion uh, make a religion a windy cloud yeah mm-hmm. like it, a cloud being blown by the wind but it does it look like the cloud that's on my shield that's why I'm having you roll religion to okay. see if you recognize it or not it's not exactly like yours yeah, that's for sure exactly. okay Ron, I'm using your dice. I don't know what to tell you. They don't work this way for me. <laughs> it's me? You're telling me it's been I, me I, the whole I time? Don't I mean, we don't have a dice can, but it's bad. It's bad. It's real bad. <laughs> Wait, I just, this is this is not a real roll. I just want to see. I just want to see. One? I just want to see. Come on. Is this going to be bad, too? That was better. Uh, there you go. Right. There you well, go. That was a, we'll was give a, you advantage. You're, you've been studying your, yeah. your religion lately. We'll okay. give you advantage on that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, the main religion in Thassa, which is the, what the town is named after, is worshipping Thassia. Thassia is the storm goddess. But the storm goddess has many um, aspects to her. She's not just storms. One of those aspects is wind. So he's obviously a follower of Thassia. That's all I'm going to give you because you rolled so bad and then you rolled good. <laughs> so You get some, not all. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. It's kind of like, you know, how there's different, like the bigger religions, there's different sects within their religion. And it's not that they're like completely different. There's just little changes between each one. Right. Mm-hmm. This is a perfect example of that. Okay. And he seems, he seems to not really care that you're noticing his necklace and he just pokes it back into his jerk and it's just something that popped out to you. Albatross, though, is a dead giveaway that at some point he spent some time on the seas. Okay. Which is not uncommon if you're living, if you're running a bar down by the ports in, in the biggest city in, uh, in Toss. Uh, I'm sorry, what did he say about recognizing my, did he say that he recognized me? He said he's heard some whispers on the wind of uh, uh, a Luxodon that, that resembles you. So, are you? I know a lot of people. I know, I know a lot of people that know a lot of people, and I'm pretty sure I heard a story about a half Luxodon, but it was a while ago, at least a few weeks. A few weeks ago. Is that about how long she went missing? Uh, yeah, it's a few weeks ago. Yep. Okay. You've. Uh, it's about four or five weeks since she's gone missing. Um, hmm. um, but uh, you've been it here. It would have about taken you at least, right. you know, yeah. two, three weeks to get down right. here. Right. And you probably like took your time and like went to Pridura yeah. and like yeah. went to a couple of other places before you made your way down to yeah. the city. Okay. Following tips and rumors, or or hey, if I was gonna go anywhere, that's where I'd be going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I will follow the wind wherever that may, may be. I'm desperate to find her. Uh, and as you say that, the door itself breaks off of the, the wooden platform, a pl- a plank that he had nailed into it, and you sort of stumble into the street. Uh, oh. And it is mayhem. 
Uh, you can't see. Wind is blowing in your face. The rain is moving in lateral, uh, lateral positioning. Uh, and there seems to be a, a shadow of a figure just a few feet into the street moving uh, away from the port further into the city. Um, make a perception check. Willie, make a perception check. Me also? Both of us. I'm going to roll the one that just rolled me a 15. Oh my god! Why? <laughs> Eight. <laughs> it does make sense. It's a storm. Yeah, it's a, it's a storm for sure. Yeah. Uh, even w- there's a, There is a huddled figure that obviously was like listening in to what was happening in the tavern. And that's who you're, that's who you're seeing. Uh, and as it as you seem to move your gaze towards that huddled huddled figure, it stands up and it it's about seven feet tall, and then darts down the street into the storm. Sansa, Willie, uh, I'm sorry, I can't hold the door, and I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Oh, I I, I don't even know where you are. He, as you look back, Willie is on the ground as he's yeah. been blown into the into the the tavern, yeah. and the bard himself is getting up, looking, uh, moving as fast as he can towards the this, door. This is like category 10 storm. This isn't yeah. like a little, you know. Rain is moving sideways, yeah. which means the winds you're are blowing. You're holding on to things so right. that you're seven feet tall and like what, two, 300 pounds. You're holding on to things so that you don't get right. swept away. Yeah. So, so inside, it's breaking a little bit of the wind that's happening outside where you are, but it's blowing everything around inside the tavern. And as you begin to move away from the tavern door, the bard gets to the door and says, you can't go out into the storm. It's too dangerous. Too dangerous! I'll have to find my sister. She, I think I might have seen her. Well, you can wait the storm out here. You don't have to go now. This might be my only chance to find her. I, here, and, and she tries with all of her might to try to pull something large up into the doorway. Well, the door is there. It. It's sort of like slammed. It's not broken off. It's slammed against the outside door. So you could, if you tried, mm-hmm. use your strength to, to close it close it so they can reactivate the boards. Okay, so she takes her warhammer and she goes, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and thunks it into the door and uh, yanks it All shut. Right. Yeah, I mean, make a strength check. Okay, please, oh, Dice, please. It's not hard. She's yeah. pretty strong. Uh, it? I... She's using a warhammer, so. <laughs> She's got leverage. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where's my strength? You okay. can add your proficiency because you're using your warhammer. Okay. Oh, great. Um, or athletics. Or athletics, yeah. if whichever's better for you. Sorry, my my D and D Beyond app is is glitching yeah. on me. Okay, I rolled a ten plus. Uh, my strength is a plus two plus my profici- prof- proficiency is plus two. So 14? fourteen. Yeah, uh, you're you're able to with using your warhammer sticking it into the into the wood. You're able to close the door. Yeah, Willie comes in and he's gonna try to help. So. Yeah. And you slam the door shut and you hear the bard. Who had picked up the hammer from from the uh, from the bar uh, begin slamming on the the nails that keep the board shut, and you hear him say, "Be careful." She doesn't say anything. She runs after her sister, after the figure. As you begin to stumble into the storm, uh, you it's almost more like doing yeah, that thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. As 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 wind is whipping it almost feels like the wind is burning your skin that it's hitting you so hard um and you're barely able to keep yourself afloat and then you are excuse me on the ground and then you begin to float as the wind begins to take you down down the street first slamming into the side of a building uh, uh, making you see stars as you roll down the street until you hit you hit the side of another building on the other side of the street and everything goes black and that's your session zero. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well okay. done. Yeah, so the last moment is you seeing black as you're being sucked up into this giant tornado. tornado. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was so great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Such a beautiful song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I I'm, I'm almost, a... almost started crying. Almost. Yeah. Really? No, yeah. seriously. I When I, when I improv- role played that I had the tinglys, like I had tinglys. Really? Yeah, that's oh why gosh. I did that. Yeah, absolutely. I was really playing into my nerves so it would be more, you know, natural but to what, how she would feel. Even that natural nerve, which came out very clearly, like that was still just such a, the words Aww. and the song. So well done. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. 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 <laughs> 
Welcome to your session zero. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, so Valcorio, something that we didn't do uh, with Jess that I'd like to do with you because mm -hmm. I think it's going to help people visualize this opening moment is just briefly describe about what Valcorio looks like mm -hmm. physically. Sure. You don't have to go into too much detail, but just a little bit, and then I'll tell you where you're at and what's happening. Yeah, Val uh, is about 30. Um, he's shorter for a dragonborn, but he's in good shape. He's looks athletic. He's neither like too bulky or like too live, but he's you know he's dexterous and and he looks like he's you know kept in good shape. Uh, he is a silver dragonborn, uh, so he's only about five foot nine, five foot ten, um, which is pretty short. It's nine pretty feet. short. Dragonborn are normally closer to seven feet. Um, he. His silver scales uh, are a little, what do you call it? Um, tarnished. Scuffed and tarnished. Yeah. Uh, uh, and yeah, I, I described him as, as looking like silverware that hasn't been polished in too long. Um, he's icy blue eyes and he has sort of a, 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 a it's like a, an odd beard of sorts of, of like spines a little bit that comes down from his chin that he's uh, tied some some things into. Uh, calculating eyes, he's he's looking for an angle a lot. Um, but uh, I like to say he, he comes from money, but uh, he also looks like he's been, you know, living on the rougher edge for a little while. Okay. Uh, Val, you find yourself uh, um, in a very small beach town. Mm -hmm outside of Lunarum, right. uh, where you're from, your, where your family is from. Uh, and then the, the name Lunarum or, or Lunarum, depending on who's pronouncing it, uh, is literally named after your family name, the Lunaris family. Uh, but you're not there right now. No. Right now you are out at a beach villa that you've been renting. Uh, it's, uh, been blasted by storm after storm. So it's got that weathered, you know, grayish white uh, wooden warping veneer on the outside. It's still a, a nice, nicer place. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there's a fishing village nearby, but there's not much else out there. It's kind of like a, like a summer house, but you've been spending all of your time there for the last four years since you left home. Mm -hmm. Uh, you are currently sitting out on the veranda looking out at the storm clouds that are way off of the coastline out up in the sky. Um, and there's a few birds floating around, not a lot of activity. And this isn't a beach in the classic sense to where there's a bunch of sand dunes and, you know, kids playing and what have you. Right. Think more like a, like an East coast beach where it's a little bit uh, sandy in, in places, but it's more grassy. Mm, okay. And uh, there's like patches of uh, reeds sticking up out of that grass. Nice. Uh, between that beach town and, or that um, dairy that you're at right now and uh, Lunarum um, are fields of barley. Mm. And that's what your family has harvested. In fact, your great, 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 grandfather Eric's is the one to invent barley wine harvesting this crop by the light of the moon and that's where moon barley wine comes from and that's where your family's fortune comes from right. so you're constantly reminded of that mm -hmm. uh, you're sipping on uh, a drink and just kind of wasting the day away as, mm -hmm. as you're apt to do uh, and you're attended by a caretaker or a servant that you brought with you, uh, who's been more or less maintaining the villa, making small meals, making you drinks. Uh, his name is Lucenzo, but he goes by Lucky. Right. He's a human. He's short, stocky, balding. And he was actually the first mate on the galleon that your father heavily invested in right before everything went to hell. Mm. Your dad invested uh, in a galleon called the Lady Blue, and there was a epic storm that hit the port of Dominion, which is near your hometown, 
that wiped out the port mm -hmm. and the galleon. That happened a year before your wedding, which was supposed to lock you into another family, mm -hmm. another rich family inside of the tri-city area that you're from. Right. Uh, so Lucky's been taking care of you for four years now. Mm -hmm. Um, and you've been paying him what you can, which isn't much. In fact, it dwindled away to next to nothing. Whatever your character sheet has on it, that's what you have left. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, Lucky uh, usually leaves you alone when you're out on the veranda, just kind of staring out into the, the clouds. Uh, but this particular day, you hear him knock very softly. And as you glance over at him in your kind of haze mm -hmm. you notice that he's wearing thicker gray uh sweater mm. and thicker breeches he's carrying a sack but he has a scroll tube in his hand that looks to have a seal on it and the seal is a silver wax that's been cracked open right sorry to uh bother you um what is it? Sir, but, um, it's been a couple days, Lucky. How are you? What's going on? Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a message. Do you want a drink? It's arrived. No, no. I'm, I'm, uh, I drink uh, on my off days, which are few and far between. Um, oh, sorry about that. That, that is to say, uh, it's a message from your, from your family, sir. And, uh, is it about the money? The money? Sir. The money, yeah. The money that my allowance seems to have been um, <laughs> dwindled slightly, I suppose. But no, it's about the money. Roll insight. Ooh. 13. Definitely not about the money. You can read his face. He looks... He... he usually doesn't make direct eye contact but when you say the money he he looks at you and then looks directly down at the ground i'm starting to um sober up slightly would you like me to open the letter for you sir no i can open my own letters please he hands it over as he hands it over you notice immediately that the seal has already been cracked okay do you read the letter yeah okay it's by your mom. It's written by Latoria, your mom. My dearest Valcorio, I'm not sure if this letter will find you, or even if you're alive at all. But something dreadful has happened, and it's time you come home. Honestly, it's been long enough, and no one cares anymore about the ghastly incident at the wedding. So much has changed, and we are barely able to compete with the other houses. Your sisters always think she knows what's best, and your brother can never seem to be bothered even with the simplest of tasks. What in all of Mechus is to become of our family's legacy? My dear sweet, sweet, sweet Valgario, do please come home at once. Uh, uh, oh yes, uh, one more thing. Your father has died. And as soon as he, as soon as you f read that part of the letter, uh, Lucky steps forward, and... Um, this will be my last day, sir. Uh, I was serving you because of your father, and since he's no longer with us, I'll be moving on. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, he throws this the sack that he has in his hand, he throws it over his shoulder. You know, it's probably just his extra clothes. Uh, well, uh, this this is unnecessary. I mean, you, you must come back to come back with me uh, uh, to Lunarum, and, and we can. No offense, sir, but I haven't been paid in quite some time. Well, and, yes, uh, but certainly my family can take care of that. I mean, you you know us. We we we've got good on our word. Well, word on the street is that your family's not got nothing left. That's what I heard. Fine. Go. Thank you for your years of loyal, loyal service, Lucenzo. I'll be certain to, um... Go. He clumps away, and as he clumps away, you remember that Lucky lost his foot when the galleon sank. And you can hear the thud, thud, thud as he walks down the planks of the building. 
he stops for a moment and he looks back at you and then turns and walks away and you don't know where he goes. As you're sitting there contemplating the note that it was you just read, um, the storms that are have become normal in the distance out in the sea royal a bit, and you can see a little bit of lightning shooting between the clouds. Is there the a wind date slightly on the letter? Is there a date? No. You know that it probably took at least two days, three days to get into the town. And you're guessing that Lucky went into town to pick up some odds and ends, and that's when he got the letter. All right. I'll slap myself in the face. Stand up and um, get my bags. Start packing, I guess. You don't have much on you. Yeah, no. yeah you kind of left in a rush when you left. So uh, you pack your things and put in a short amount of time. I try as best as I can to look um, impressive. I, I put on my breastplate, which is pretty um, beaten up, uh, and uh, do kind of a quick like hand washing of my clothes and everything like that as best as I can, you know? <sighs> There's just enough food left in the cupboards and just enough water, uh, although you can always get water from a rain barrel if needs be, but just enough to make the journey back home. It's gonna take you by foot. It's gonna take you a couple days. Right. Um, and I grab my uh, my sword and a small dagger, I guess, or something. But um, I'll go visit the. Uh, I'll take everything that I've that I've got, what what little there is of it, and and, uh, and visit the proprietors of the of the place before I leave. The owners of the villa? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So you just go into yeah. the uh, fishing village? All right. Uh, you get into the fishing village, and it's pretty barren. Like, there's not a lot of people there. It's not the time of year where fishing is really uh, thriving, mm -hmm. and the storms out on the water have gotten progressively worse over the years. Mm -hmm. So no one goes out far. Mm -hmm. And the biggest boat is like a small little skiff or like a, maybe like a long boat. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are like one or two person size boats. Uh, but you get into uh, Armeria where the, um, as you're saying, the owners uh, exist. And uh, you notice that most of the fishing houses have been boarded up mm -hmm. uh, for the storm season that's coming soon. Okay. Um, but you managed to get to their abode. Okay. You didn't really have a lot of interaction with them. No. They knew who you were mm -hmm. and they knew your family name. So right. they, they quickly signed a, a lease essentially allowing you to stay there because they knew that your name uh, would, would carry some weight. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will, I will knock loudly on the door. Okay. Uh, a little bit of time passes, and uh, sure enough, um, there's a older uh, dragonborn, mm -hmm. um, Copper. Uh, he's not the owner of mm -hmm. the villa, but he's kind of like the the middleman, the one that handles the, the business, the proprietor. Mm -hmm. um, he comes down, and it looks like he was just finishing a meal because he still has like the, the bib tucked in and what have you. Right. Pulls that out and he quickly wipes off his face. Oh. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. I'm not remembering your name. Uh, but it's it's good to see you again. Uh, uh, Cedric. Cedric. It's very good to see you. Uh, I have been called by official decree uh, back to Lunarum. But oh. I simply... Yes. Yes. Very official. Very important business. Uh, but I wanted to make sure to uh, let 
um, 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 my landlord know his name be Master Twist. Master Twist, of course, yes. And I need to make sure to let him know that I will be returning as soon as possible and, of course, for him to uh, reserve my quarters and keep them as such. Cedric, who's at the door? Come back to dinner, love. Uh, sorry, uh... It's no, 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 I, I needn't, I, yes, uh, I, I needn't uh, distract you, uh, please, but but uh, please pass that along, let him know you that... You want to continue renting... Absolutely, yes, let him, villa. yes, let him know that Valcorio uh, of, of House uh, Lunaris uh, would uh, greatly appreciate the reserving of my quarters while I am gone, shouldn't be more than a, a few days. Oh, all right, uh... Did you want to put any sort of deposit down? No, 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 no. That shouldn't be necessary. He knows uh, the the, um, the, um, the 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 state of of my credit and the state of my my family's uh, credit. Cedric, your yes. soup's getting cold. No, no, no. Go on, go on, please. I, I mean, but please pass that along. I just wanted to make sure that uh, my quarters would be there ready upon my return. Right. Uh, well, yes. Uh, I don't see that being a problem. It's not like there's lots of. Leases. Well said, well right said, now. yes. And and do be safe. The, the storm uh, looks terrible, so yes. Oh, there's another one, isn't there? Yes. Well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, pass that along, and uh, yes. <clears throat> Are you leaving today? Yeah, I'm leaving uh, uh, post-haste, actually, right uh, now. Well, safe travels. Thank you so much. Uh, the best, my best to your missus. Yeah. I give a bow <laughs> and leave. <laughs> leave quickly. What's that supposed to mean, Cedric? <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing. It's, it's, uh, 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 oh, the soup is um, mm, delicious. Can't wait for my third bowl. Um, all right, so you hit the road. Yeah. Uh, so the travel is long, mm -hmm. um, but it is uneventful, other than a couple rain clouds. Every you know, every once in a while, you get hit by a rain cloud, but these rain clouds aren't like the storms that will occasionally hit this is more like you know you just get a light rain <sighs> that, that soaks you and then you have to travel in the, the muddy roads um however uh as luck would have it there is a uh farmer that has a completely on like the second day there's a farmer that has a completely full cart with freshly harvested moon barley Oh. And you see him taking the cart, and you know exactly where he's going. Mm. Uh, he's got an old um, uh, donkey mm -hmm. that uh, he's got hitched up that he's trying to get, you know, motivated to start pulling this cart into uh, Lunar. Go ahead. Are you there, old, old man? Huh? Yes. H hello. Hello. Oh. Uh. Uh, yes. Lord, yes. Uh, well, this is very fortuitous for us both, actually. Uh, I am uh, looking for passage into uh, Lunarum, and I seem to have uh, been, um, well, somewhat abandoned uh, by my caretaker. So, and we were going to head into Lunarum together, but um, oh. since I, I assume you're headed that direction yourself. Yes, taking it in to uh, trade it off. Fantastic. Uh, could I uh, perhaps um, uh, join you uh, on your on your journey? I am of House Lunaris, and uh, oh. it would be greatly appreciated by he, my family. He looks you up and down. Mm -hmm. Give me a, um, <laughs> I guess, persuasion? Yeah, it's not technically a lie. Yeah, it's definitely not a lie. E oh, what did that say? I need to roll that again. Oh, 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 pretty good. Persuasion, uh, 21. Uh, uh, yes, my lord. Excellent. Uh, I'm afraid there's not much room up here in the front, but you're free to ride in the back with the barley. Well, that'll do, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's By fine. the way, the barley cart, the way it works, there's three sides to the, the like, fenced-off sides. The back of it is open, uh -huh. so there's, like, a... Um, well, I should know this. There's, a um, like, a pickup... Uh, yeah, like yeah. a gate that flops down on the back. You could sit on that so you're not literally sitting on the barley. Well, it'll be a, a bit of a bumpy ride, but yes, yes, that is uh, precisely what I would like to do. Thank you so much. Roads used to be in better shape, you know. Um, yes, yes. Storms do quite a bit of business out here. That they do. That washing they do. bits and pieces of the road away. I remember when I was a young. Did you boy. need help with your horse? Uh, I could possibly help. Uh, you mean the donkey? The donkey, yes, of course. A very noble-looking donkey. Uh, may I? May I help? No, uh, no. She she knows what she needs to do, and he pulls out a little riding crop and like whips her on the butt. Not like 
violently. Yeah. It's just enough to kind of, you know. Okay, excellent. And the cart starts to move. Well, uh, yes, and, and my, my family will be very grateful for your assistance in um, um, hastening my trip back home. So. Oh, well, let's pick it up then. And Thank you. <laughs> whips no. the donkey a couple no. more times no. and it Ow. picks up speed. Um, it, it is not necessarily a pleasant ride. There are no shocks my butt. on this <laughs> cart. And the road is more like a trail um, going weaving back and forth through these various farms. Mm -hmm. You look around and the crops of the barley this particular season seem to be pretty big. They seem mm -hmm. to be, I mean, there's lots of rain. There's lots of, you know, it's, they're, they're, they're growing just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, had you ever cared about the agricultural side of your family's business at all? Right. Uh, that yeah. being said, as you were traveling that direction and you get closer to town, you do notice, uh, when especially when there's actual like uh activity in the town itself you do notice people bustling about and they do clock you they do mm. see you riding this barley cart yeah <laughs> <laughs> um huh. and we're getting pretty close to the city now we're getting into the yes. uh, into the outskirts yes um the trail's also gotten significantly muddier as you've traveled north. All right. Uh, I would probably jump off uh, shortly after, like, getting to near the near the city limits. Okay. I basically, as soon as I started to see more than a couple people and more of them clocking me, I, I would be, um, 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 sir, uh, uh, yeah. gentle farmer, sir. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I think my time. I think this is far enough. I do appreciate oh, you. Oh, but Lunara, it's halfway into the city. Yes, yes. No, this will do just fine. Uh, my legs are due for a walk. I think uh, I seem to have lost most feeling in them after this ride. But I uh, do thank you so much. And uh, yes, let the. Uh, let the Bursa know when you arrive that you uh, uh, assisted um, uh, Valcorio, uh, and they will certainly give you um, some sort of um, commission. I don't know. As you hop off of this mm -hmm. uh, uh, cart, uh, you weren't lying when you said your legs had fallen asleep, so make a dexterity save. <laughs> I take that very personally as someone whose legs like to fall asleep a lot. <laughs> uh, that is a 16. Oh, uh, and though they fa have fallen asleep, you're able to catch yourself before you, before you face plant right into <laughs> the mud. Um, and I have a moment to straighten myself and um, straighten my rapier at my side and just... <clears throat> Try to make myself look as good as possible as I uh, stride into the city. So, uh, so you get into the city. The city is just as you remembered it, mm. but there's something there's something a little bit off by people's reactions to you. Mm. That is the people that actually recognize you. You've been gone for long enough mm. that there are some people that look at you, they look at your armor and they look at your weapons and then they kind of do a double take where it's almost like you can tell they're trying to figure out who or what mm -hmm. you are or what you were. Mm -hmm. uh, most silver dragonborns uh, are from the Lunaris mm -hmm. family or somehow like cousins or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you clearly don't look like one of the nobility. You look more like a captain of the guard at this point because of how tarnished all right. of your belongings are. So you're getting some double double looks, but nobody actually talks to you. Right. I would probably, at a certain point, uh, I mean, I would probably try to, like, if I had a cloak, trying to, like, cover a bit of, cover the armor or something like sure. that. And then at a certain point... That would probably I would realize that it was just the 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 jig was up and I would just start just meeting everybody's eyes and just giving a nod and as, right. you know what the only one <laughs> the only one that actually takes the time to like not look away mm -hmm. because there's definitely classism in the, yeah the this particular area uh, is there's one particular gif. That uh, and you know the Gith family that uh, lives here. They're from Cosmolag, mm. uh, and there's the um, ASMR and Tiefling families that are in Solessa, mm -hmm. uh, which you were supposed to be married to one of them. Correct. Uh, the Gith are. Thank you for bringing it up. The most, 
they're the most uh, passionate. Mm-hmm. They're the most uh, um, the gif. Gif. Yeah. They're the most aggressive, and they're the ones that are definitely trying to climb the power structure the quickest. Mm-hmm. In fact, one of the reasons why you were supposed to be married to the Celesa family was to create an alliance between the Lunaris and the Celesa family so that the Gith wouldn't be the most powerful family. Because the Gith are known for making magical weapons and armor. Hmm. Your family is known for making magical spells and potions. Mm-hmm. And the Celesa are known for making magical miscellaneous items like Lovers. musical instruments or cool. rings mm-hmm. or those sorts of things. Love it. So the more militaristic yeah. enchanters, since all of these families are enchanters for the most part, are the gif. Mm-hmm. So there's one guy in particular that just sort of stares you down, yellow skin, that has that very angular, you know, dour look that most gif have. His hair is pulled back into like a tight ponytail, a couple of different arcane tattoos, not wearing any armor, mind you, but he's got this wicked looking double bladed scimitar strapped to his back. And he's the only one that doesn't seem to be intimidated by the fact that you're this stout, strong, armored dragonborn walking down the street. Yeah, I probably clock his looks and but I'm I'm not. Yeah, he's not being aggressive. Yeah, and I'm not wasting time. Yeah, with he's this. the guy with the toothpick in his mouth that watches you walk down the street. Yeah, I, I yeah. kind of gave up this this competitiveness between these families mm-hmm. a while ago. Great. And I haven't really cared about it, Love so it. I'm just going to keep walking. Great. You finally get to your parents' house, starting to get dark at this point, but you still immediately see the walls, the very familiar iron gates. They're rusted at this point, not well kept up at all. One of them is slightly open, so they're, they haven't even been locked or chained. There's no guards posted, but there's two huge black stallions that look like they've been ridden hard and they're a little uh, muddy. Um, and they're uh, tied up out front of the building, not even inside the courtyard, because you would have stables. You would have someone clearly right. taking care of these horses. These horses are tied up in front of the building when you approach the gates. Um, are the stallions, are they saddled? Is there any sort oh, yeah. of uh, emblem or uh, anything I would recognize? Let's do perception. Sure. Terrible. <laughs> That's a three. <laughs> the, the curse of the session. <laughs> No, Every imagine, perception no, check. I imagine what Katie's going to roll. And, but but yeah, he passed terrible. his deck save to fall in the mud, and that's the part I'm That's the important part. No, so you're not muddy. Um, ah. <laughs> you do not see any anything that would explain who owns these horses. Hmm. But they are very big, muscular, very expensive well, horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Doesn't nice seem to be carrying a whole lot either. Right. Not yeah. a whole lot of bags. So yeah, and, and they're, they're yeah, it's just two horses. They're not right. they're not like having right. pulled a cart or something, no. or a, a wagon or a no. carriage. And the gate is ajar. All right. Um, how far from the gate to the house? Oh, okay. there's a courtyard. Okay. So there's you know yeah. a good yeah I'll, 40, 50 feet. I'll push open the gate and walk inside. Okay. So you walk inside and it creaks and you immediately see the disrepair. This place has not been kept up. You see the statue of Eryx, your great ancestor, and it's starting to crumble and it's overgrown. You see uh, that a couple of the windows are boarded up. None of the hedges have been trimmed or taken care of at all. There's no servants anywhere. And the worst part, the worst part, is there's this large silo that your family built that used to be like the first silo. It was this this iconic landmark of the Lunaris family mm-hmm. where they first harvested the barley wine and first turned it into this magical moon wine. It's iconic because it has a bronze copper yeah. look on the, on the roof. Yeah. Collapsed. Crumbled to the ground and the bronze top part mm-hmm. is bent in on itself from the weight of the stones that held up the silo. You see the front of the building and it the you know the paint is peeling and uh 
normally there would be servants there to mm. greet you or to, to take you in and, you know, to take your bags or whatever. There's no one there. And the door to the front of your house is also left open. And you notice a fat, obese, fat, black and white cat squeeze its way out between the two doors and you remember this cat yeah. from four years ago yeah. and it was like a normal looking thin cat it looks like it's been fed you know five course meals every every day since you left cuddles cuddles is it it's literally the only creature to greet you when you oh. arrive so four years is not an incredibly long time. No. No. Is there anything about these circumstances that feels magical? It's possible. I mean, yeah, magic is a pretty regular part of his, even though he's not uh, um, talented in magic at all. Uh, he's pretty used skilled to in it. Arcana? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> no. No, so I would give you an Arcana check if you... No, I'm not. Um, yeah, no, no. Okay. <laughs> cuddles. I'll pick, I'll pick up Cuddles. <laughs> he's, uh, he's heavy. He's yeah, <laughs> a heavy cat. But seems to like being picked up. Yeah, okay. uh, seems to cuddle, you know, true to his names, cuddles you. Where's uh, Bertomius? What are you doing here? Come on, cuddles. Hello? Mother? No answer. Almost as if uh, your voice is echoing off the walls. Vizzy! Bretonius! Oh, where are they? I must go. Hello? Master Ball! Cuddles jumps out of your arms All and right. uh, walks deeper into the house. Yeah, I'll walk in. You walk in and uh, you get into the little fo foyer area and uh, the inside of the house is a little bit better kept. It looks like it's been cleaned and everything's been put in its place. Nothing new, though. Everything is as it was almost four years ago. Mm. Uh, and you hear someone mumbling to themselves and you hear sweeping sounds coming from the main study. I meant to ask this at the time, by the way. My mother's letter. The casual nature with which she threw in the last line about my father's death felt strange. Yeah. And that is not, didn't feel like her. Sure. Okay. I was just, I the, to me, yeah. I, I, yeah, I was like, that feels, she's not that cold, I don't think. No. Okay. Yeah, I, I was clocking that. I wanted to make sure and I forgot to ask mm -hmm. at the time. Okay. So in seeing this again and seeing how this level of disrepair that everything's fallen into, that's coming to mind again is, is how the letter was written and how it was almost thrown in nonchalantly that, well, it that the patriarch like, of our family yes, is dead. It almost looked like she meant to put that first and forgot and then had to add it in at the end unless she wanted to redo the whole letter. Okay. And it was also in her handwriting, which normally... It would not be. Someone else would have written it. Correct. Dictated. Correct. So she made a mistake and then realized it and then added right. it in at the end. She's not used to writing her own letters. Right. But there's definitely like a an odd an oddity there. Yeah. Mother. No. Oh, um uh, hello? Do hello? Know, do I recognize the voice? Uh, Mr. Ball. Mr. Ball! An elderly dragonborn, white, dressed in a like shabby gray suit that's been stitched together way too many times, but it's still clean, mm -hmm. uh, comes out and he's got his sleeves rolled up and he's holding a broom. Oh, uh, Master Valcorio, what, what, what brings you home? Uh, well, Mr. Ball, I where know is what my family? Brings you home, actually. I received my mother's letter. Where is my family? Well, your mother is up in her room. Right. Uh, your sister is probably in your father's office. Uh, she spends most of her time there now. And, right. Oh, uh, well, um, your brother is probably in his room with uh, Cuddlesworth. Oh, well, no, he 
Yeah. Cuddle's worth is down here, it appears. The crowd... I was just cleaning out the hearth. The grounds look terrible. Yes, um, afraid most of the servants had to be let go. What? It's not my place to speak fine, about Fine, fine, fine. Your mother will wish to speak to you. Yeah, right, of course. Of course she would. Um, By the way, he looks like gaunt. My he looks father. like he hasn't eaten anything in a while. Uh, my father. Yes. When? Um, it's not my place to say, so When? Your mother asked that if you were ever to return, that to send you to her first. My condolences, sir. I go to... I'm actually going to go straight to Busy. I'm going to go to Dad's office. Okay. So, you know where to go. So you go right past your mom's room, yeah. right past your brother's room. Yeah, I'm not ready for that yet. And as you're going down this hall, you see the painting, the bust of Eric's Lunaris. Mm-hmm. You see your great, 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 great grandfather, your great, great, great grandfather, your great grandfather, your <laughs> grandfather, your father is the last one. And as you are getting to that, because it's a long haul, as you are getting to that painting, the double doors to the, uh, your father's office, which you were almost never allowed in, even when you came of age, burst open and two men come out, both of them wearing black suits with green cloaks and gold clasps, both tan, like darker skin, shaved heads, one tall, skinny, the other one short and stocky. And they come out and they're just kind of grumbling and talking to one another. Human? Yeah, both human. Okay, not, not ASMR? No. Okay. Not what I was expecting. Not at all. I don't think they have a penny to their name. Pathetic. Indeed. We'll have to report this. Indeed. And they walk right past you as if you're a servant. All right. Step aside and let them go. Okay. They walk down the hallway and start to go down the stairs. The doors are left open to your father's office. Do you peer inside? Okay. So when you look inside, um, Vizette uh, is there. She is standing at your father's window, his big window that he would like to look out at. This is his office, so there's a big desk. Uh, There's a bust of Eric's. There's... um, uh, a massive, the massive oak desk that's just filled with papers. Over in the corner, there's a viola that you know your dad knew how to play and played at one point, but you barely ever saw him play. And it looks like it hasn't been touched, obviously, in years. And so it's collecting dust. Um, there's a fireplace. There's a painting that's half finished of a ship. And there's your sister. Your sister is tall, thin. Uh, and for a dragonborn, you would almost describe her as handsome. Mm-hmm. She's regal and just like you remember her, but there's there's a moment where you almost hear like a like a grinding sound and at first you glance around to see where it could be coming from and you realize that it's her mouth. Mm -hmm. She's literally grinding her dragonborn teeth, which are sharp. Uh, And you can see the muscles on the side of her jaw clench as she's looking out this. So she's facing away from me when I walk. Yeah. And as you glance around, make a perception check. 10. You notice there's a couple of, um, Stacks of paper on the desk. Three stacks. Three stacks, in fact. She seems to not be paying attention to what's behind her at all, staring out the window. Yeah, I'd probably take a moment to um, observe this scene. Look at you. Oh. She turns around. You finally decided to return. Wonderful. Have you spoken to Mummy yet? 
No. I can see straight here. You can see that there's bags underneath her eyes that there weren't before, and her eyes are somewhat bloodshot. Come here, would you? It's good to see you. And I will go forward and... No, I don't think we'll be doing any of that today. Who are those men? It's none of your business, remember? You decided to walk away. So now it's my business. I'm taking over the family business. I'm going to fix all of this. Good. You were always the better one to anyway. She seems somewhat surprised to hear you say that, and she slowly walks over to the desk and starts to sit down and realizes that it's just filled with these papers and then picks herself back up and walks over to, there's a cabinet there where there's like a small glass bottle that you know is filled with the Lunaris Moonwine and she pours herself a small glass. Would you like one? Yes, please. She immediately hands you the one that she poured and pours herself another and takes a big gulp and then looks back out the window. What happened? Do you really want to know? At least about father, yes. Well, a few days, well, more than a few days now, I guess it's been a fortnight. Father wasn't doing very well up here. And we found him in the yard, face down in the mud. We brought in a couple priests to discover the cause of death, and they couldn't tell us anything. It's a mystery. Yes. Of a certain age? Is that not, could have been natural, or is there actually some sort of a villainy suspected? In the corner of your eye, you see the two riders uh, speeding down, down the way, out the window. I've been far too busy to investigate. A lot has happened since you left. I can tell. Brother barely speaks to anyone, and Mother herself is starting to lose it. Perhaps she's been afflicted by the same curse that Father had. Do you really think it's a curse? No, I don't know. Frankly, I'm so busy with all of this, and she gestures at the desk, I don't have the time. The fields, on my way into the city, they were... Teaming. Yes. It should be a good year. Right. Yes. Hopefully. Hopefully that will fix things. What's the problem? Look, brother, you left. This isn't your problem anymore. It's mine. You were always going to be better at this than I was. Well, you never really paid attention when you were being taught anything except for that and she gestures at the rapier at your hip yeah, well. behind you there's a <clears throat> and standing there is Mr. Ball seems to be carrying a letter well I'll um, leave you to your business yes welcome home Brother. I'll go to the, um, the viol. You said it was viola? Yeah. I'm going to take it with me. It's big. Oh, is it? I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a, oh, is it cello size? It's a medieval sized viola. Oh, it is, I thought violas were smaller, like violins. Uh, there's, slightly larger there's, than violins. There's different it's sizes, size but this is oh. this is one of the bigger ones. This is like, oh, yeah, yeah. I take the whole thing. <laughs> 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 clone, clone, clone. <laughs> yeah, 
out of my knee, sister. I'm going to subtly take this out of the room. Uh, I mean, you don't no, think she, you don't it. think she would care mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got that sense. Um, no, that don't leave it. Uh, she walks over and she's about ready to grab the message or the letter, and she looks at it, and she looks at you. What? And then she puts her hand back down. Is that for me? Paul hands you the letter. What? There's a pair of golden wings. What gets around? I open it. Inside is um, in a, a handwriting that you uh, remember. Immediately recognize, yeah. Uh, and, and recognize, and it says... Uh, okay. It says... Read it I... slowly. Yeah. Because <laughs> I might stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might put it away. It says, um, D- Dear Val, I missed you. No, put that. No, no. <laughs> I roll it back mm-hmm. up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I'll read that later. Mm-mm. Time for that later. And not in front of her. Anyway, I'll take the thank you. No. Uh, Mr. Ball stops a moment, tries not to show on his face that that was odd to him, and bows and uh, leaves. Perhaps you should go see Mother. Yes. Good. She sits back down at the desk and she takes one of the pieces of paper and she looks at it and she starts to sign her name and then sets it to the side and takes another piece of paper and starts to sign her name. You look good back there. She doesn't say anything. I leave. Okay. Are you walking down the hallway to the mom? Yeah. Okay, great. So you get to uh, her room, and uh, when you step inside, it's just as extravagant as what you were expecting. By the way, your mother and your father had a joint room, but they also had their own rooms, too. This is her, what she liked to call her gown room. Nice. So this room is just filled with all of her personal belongings, gems, jewels, gowns, what have you. There's another bed, which she sometimes sleeps in here. Sure, sure. Um, But it's pretty pretty extravagant. Um, But when you walk inside, uh, she's using magic hand to literally lift up gowns and whisk them across the room. And then she taps her finger for a second and then sets it into a pile. And then she'll pick up a piece of jewelry with magic hand and look at it and then sets it into another pile. And you're welcome to say what you want. Oh, knock softly. Oh, uh, yes, to come in. Mother. Oh, Falcorio, you've returned. Hello, my sweet boy. Hello. What do you think? Should I keep this one? And she presents you what looks like a very large ruby. Oh, um, whatever you wish, I suppose. I, I don't know. It would fetch a large price. Uh, okay. And she waves her hand and mage hands it into uh, the pile that she just put the dress. Uh, I received a letter. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm so glad you're here. I, I assume you'll be taking over now that you're here and helping your sister. Oh, um... The time for that later. Um, what is what is wrong with you? Why do you? I'm sorry. I've been, such... been traveling. I've been on the road. Oh. Uh, but um, are you all are you all right? Oh, I'm perfectly fine. I have my things, but the one thing, if I must be honest with you, I am worried about this family. But other than that, I'm fine. I believe that now that you're here, things will be solved. You and your sister, of course. You've seen the barley on the way in? Mm -hmm. The crop is growing beautifully. We just have to wait. And now that you're here, that waiting will go far faster. Now, what of this one? And uh, she holds up what is a silvery gown, almost matching the color of her own scales. I'll get closer to her and and kind of kneel down, basically try to meet her eyes close up. Are, are you okay, Valkyrie? Oh, n- no, I'm... It's good to see you. Hmm. 
It's good to see you as well. Especially now that we'll know that our family name is saved. <laughs> yes, especially that. Um, Will you be taking over right away, or...? Oh, um, the time for that. Time for that later, Mother. Um, well, it is the only thing that is important. I hope the time is now. Well, has Father been put to rest? Is everything...? Oh, um, I, I don't know. Ball is taking care of all of that. All right. Um, how does she seem? Like, lucidity? Anything like... Uh, she's always been kind of, like, uh, extravagant and a little bit uh, uh, prone to uh, exaggeration. Uh-huh. Like, it's never like, you know, uh, oh, I, um, I, I dropped this class. It's like, oh, that was my favorite class. Right. Uh now she actually seems almost like a little um like distracted by something else right distracted yeah all right um bretonius how is he oh you'd have to ask him yourself he's in his room i don't see him he's a bit of um recluse recluse all right well yes i'm i'm here mother i'll, I'll um... I'll come see you later. He has a fancy um, idea of marrying a gith he keeps talking about. I don't really pay attention. He talks and does nothing, so it's hard for me to listen. But that's all going to change now that you're here, Valkorio. I'm so excited. Um, Now this one, and she brings over a beautiful purple velvet uh, gown. Yeah, there's definitely part of Val that hardens up at some of that. This one, I... Do you remember when your father gave me this one? Oh. No. You gifted it to me on your birthday. Mm. I do love it. You should keep it. And stand up. Well, maybe I will. And she made hands it back to the rack. And she seems to look outside. And, oh! I believe you may have a visitor outside. If I'm seeing that correctly, I look. You look outside and standing at the gate, you see a woman wearing like a white shawl and a white dress. And it it would normally be totally bizarre, but then back behind her, you see this black carriage that's uh, got a couple of horses, not black stallions. They're sure. just like regular uh, um, uh, draft horses. Um, but she's standing there at the gates. At, Do I recognize her? Oh, yeah. Oh, immediately. my God. <laughs> uh, immediately. In um, the carriage are a tiefling and what clearly look very similar, uh, Asimar type, in very nice clothing waiting on the carriage. And she's standing at the gate outside the house? Yeah. She seems to be looking around confused, waiting for a, for a servant to open right. a gate for her. Uh, are you okay, Valkoria? Uh, Don't be rude! Uh, yes, yes, Mother, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll stand up and... Um, I'm still considering the letter as I'm, as I'm walking down and... and Give me I'm, a perception check. You glance out the window again, and she's gone. And you see the man that's riding up on top of the carriage. He's looking around like he doesn't know where she went either. He seems completely confused. I will walk downstairs uh, to the main entrance. And keeping an ear out. Okay. Give me another perception. Come on. No, six. You hear balls sweeping in the room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in Cuddlesworth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, standing alone by myself near the entrance of the door, I will open the letter again. Okay. And read it. It says, Dear Val, I miss you. We have to meet. 
It's to sign Strix. Would she know the secret way to get into the house? She's a spellcaster. <laughs> Almost everybody here that's, that's of nobility yeah. is some form of spellcaster. Strix! Are you here? She manifests in front of you. I wanted to see how you were doing, and you seem to be avoiding me. I've been home for all of ten minutes. Word gets around fast. Apparently. Don't talk to me in that tone. Well. We are in this situation because of you. What does that mean? That means four years ago, we were to be married. Yes, I'm well aware. I loved you. Why? You left before you even told me why. You shut the door in my face. You killed my cousin. Don't you think that ex that, that is a normal reaction? Technically, he didn't kill him. He just stabbed him. <laughs> you, you did this, thank you. Stabbed. I apologize. <laughs> I'm, a bit, I'm a bit emotional. <laughs> no, it's fine. Perhaps we should not be so close to the rest while we have this conversation. Would you like to follow me on a walk around your estate, perhaps? No, it would be too depressing. I noticed that coming up. Fine. No, I'll lead her out the front. I'll, we'll walk over towards the ruin of the silo, I guess. Okay, you start walking over towards the silo, and you notice that the, the guy that was driving the uh, cart, the carriage, the tiefling, he the guy that was up on her, he gets off, and as he gets off, he sees her and sees you, and he starts to walk inside, and you see him just looking around, like looking for some kind of guard or security, but um, doesn't see anything. And he is armed. like He's clearly like her bodyguard as well. Um, uh, he sees you, he sees her, and you start walking towards the silo, and he just kind of follows you, and there's a, there's a tension there. He's clearly of the family that she's been promised to, if not already married. Fine. I apologize. I must keep me safe. That's fine. I don't take it personally. Mm. What do you want? What do you want, Strix? Well, I wanted to see you. I'm dealing with a lot right now, if you can't tell. So I was going to try to take it slowly, but apparently fate has other ideas. So just tell me what you want. Honestly, I just wanted to see you. I wanted to make sure that what I had been told was true. What had you been told? That you had returned without a warning, without any four years of no contact vow. I'm to be married now. Do you even care? I wish you the best. That's all you have to say what to What do you want me to say? How you feel. You've had four years to think of this. To tell me why. To save something of our friendship at the very least. And you disappeared Mechus knows where. I can't really deal with this right now. She, away she turns and starts to walk away. And as she starts to walk away, her foot sinks into the ground. She seems caught on awares by that. And then what? her other foot sinks into the ground. And she and looks at you. What are you doing? The Nothing. ground starts to swirl will, will, around. Oh, help me! You get caught in it as well. Purple light starts to pour up around you. And as it pours up around you, part of the silo gets sucked in. The hedge around you gets sucked in. The statue of your, your uh, ancestor gets sucked into this, this vortex, this swirling purple vortex. Yellow light starts to shoot out of the ground. Strix Lucario! You, you reach out for her, and both of you get sucked into the ground, and blackness surrounds you. And that's the end of your session, Zero. Welcome! <laughs> Go! <laughs> oh! <laughs> crap! Oh my god, that was a lot!
guys. It was. <laughs> it was. Yes, it was. Wow. By the way, he said Game of Thrones. <laughs> Said Game of Thrones. Game so of Thrones. Gave him Absolutely. 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 Hi, Carrie. Welcome Hello. to your session zero. Thank you. And welcome to the team. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, we are super excited to have you. And uh, I, I, for one, am, uh, I, I, I think it's going to add a much, not that I don't love you guys, but it's going to add a much he needed- love He doesn't love us. Yeah. It's a lie. A much needed like- Well, for um, deception. Thank you. I failed, I failed miserably <laughs> failed, on that one. That one. Yeah. Uh, a, a much needed like, breath of new air. So okay. we are very excited to have you. And it's not just yeah. him. Yeah. He said for him for one. It's uh, us for two. Aww. True. So, yeah. True. Thank uh, you. So before we get into our session zero, we're mm -hmm. having everybody briefly Introduce themselves and also describe their character physically. Okay. Um, uh, but the, introduce the character. Yes. Not yes. myself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we already know you're Carrie Lee. Right. Okay, okay. And you're amazing. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, I am Coco Aldershadow. Ooh. Yes, I am a wood elf ranger. A fae wanderer. Oh, I like this. I barely know what a lot of that means, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> so, uh, for those who don't know, Carrie is a, a long form improviser and is very talented in that matter. She's yeah. very much like Katie, though, in that in her first sessions, these will be, she has played D&D on once. 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 Yeah, once, twice, <laughs> maybe now, after this one. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, the great thing is, everybody that watches these shows that either doesn't play or has never played, uh, they get to learn through you. Mm -hmm. So we can learn together. That's exactly. Right. That's right. And you get to ask any questions you want. There is no stupid okay, questions. So. I'm the in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what is yeah. what does Coco look like? Coco has really cool hair. So <laughs> like dark copper hair. Has like very close, um, like almost like pixie close on the sides and then like Kind of tall and almost like faux hawkish and it's long and luxurious and copper and um also uh looks asian um oh, yeah. <laughs> has that kind of kind of feel um has uh these really cool bracelets that are sort of uh both for functions so they kind of help protect but also they're from her fae family oh. mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, there will be a matching choker with that because you gotta. Talk to me how tall is she? She's five six. Five six. And right. also Coco is a she they. She they. So those are interchangeable. Both right. are acceptable. Um, yeah, and uh, just uh, curvy and athletic and light on their feet, but moving around confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, well, yeah, that makes perfect sense because <laughs> we're, we're starting yeah. you uh -huh. in the Feywild. Okay. So you're actually a Fey Wanderer in the Feywild. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and as I briefly described to you before, the Feywild is a uh, kind of crazy place. It's infused with emotion. So it's never just a tree or a bush, or a rock, or a babbling brook. It is a tree that weeps. It mm -hmm. is a rock that smiles and chitters. It's a babbling brook that has uh, um, flowing one direction one moment and then turns around and flows the opposite direction mm -hmm. just because it feels like flowing that direction. So uh, I like that. logic is not something that really gets applied to many things in the Feywild. And you've been here for a while, but you've completely lost track of time mm -hmm. because time is not necessarily uh, linear. a, a linear mm -hmm. thing in the Feywild. Uh, it's as emotive as anything else is. It's okay. as, uh, of its own whim. Okay. Yeah. And uh, at this point, you've been here long enough, you're getting that like, Alice in Wonderland feeling where it's like you just want to go home at mm -hmm. this point. Like you've experienced some craziness. Mm -hmm. Fay fatigue. Yeah. And oh. yeah. And you like you'd like to go to your elven homeland right. where things are a little bit more sane, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Uh, so we're going to start you 
deep in the Feywild. You've been a ranger for a while now, and you've survived not only in your home world, but also in this strange realm. Mm -hmm. And you're wandering through the woods because you heard a rumor from a toadstool that spoke to you that told you that there was an entrance from the Feywild back into your home world. So you're searching for that entrance. portal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and all the toadstool to told you was that there was a large tree that grew upwards. In other words, upside down. Okay. Like the roots, <laughs> the roots grow Up. into the canopy of the trees, okay. and the tree itself grows down into the ground, and the branches branch out along the ground and curl up, and there's not only evergreen... Uh, needles but also deciduous leaves uh coming out of the same tree okay. out of the same even the same branch at times okay which again would not make any sense in the real world but in this world it makes complete sense and the reason why the toadstool explained to you that that could possibly be a portal mm -hmm. is because it's the fusion of the two worlds so it's almost like the tree oh. uh is part in the Feywild and part in the Prime Material Plane mm. and particularly the island that you're from. So you're tromping through the woods trying to find this tree and you stumble into an area that looks like a ruin, like a stone structure that's almost like just a ring of stones on the ground okay. at first. And in the middle of that stone structure, there's a, a flat area where there's not a lot of growth. It looks like it's kind of tromped down. But you notice that there are um, writhing creatures, uh, smaller creatures, crawling about inside of the dirt. And uh, it almost looks like they're trying to crawl out of the stone circle itself. You also notice uh, that the stone structure looks to be built. They're like bricks. It's not like uh, natural stone. Oh, okay. It's like actual oh, bricks okay. that have been laid out in this circle. Okay. What would you like to do? <sighs> and you have no idea what time of day it is because there's light, but you don't even really know where it's coming from because there's this tree canopy. So there's just kind of light pouring in through different cracks. Well, I think I'd like to see if uh, anybody down there needs my help. You mean inside of the yeah. ring? Okay, yeah. so you approach. Yes. Okay, give me a perception. So what you're going to do okay. is roll a d20 mm -hmm. and... Uh... 15. Okay, great. Um, you immediately notice that the ground is sort of writhing with these creatures. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first... You think maybe they're snakes of some kind, but as you get closer, they actually look like uh, giant worms Ooh. burrowing up in and out of the ground. And they seem to be serving some sort of purpose. You're not quite sure what. Uh, give me another d20 roll. We're going to call this a nature check. 16. Wow. She's the only one rolling well. I know. Um, that's great. Good for them. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> so you can tell that these worms are actually uh, digesting the earth oh. and churning it about and turning it into more fertile mm. soil. But they seem to be doing it almost as if they are controlled oh. by something. Like they seem to be working hard mm -hmm. at this task in a very intentional way manner and they're not aggressive they don't attack you or like try to crawl up out of the stone they're just sort of eating away at this worm bed mm -hmm. is there anything you would like to do or say well i'd like to taste the dirt oh okay yeah so you just reach down and pinch up some of the dirt and taste it probably yeah okay mm -hmm. um i definitely don't want to step in it yeah no give me yeah. a give me a nature roll okay are you trying to include some of the worm or not? No. Okay. Yeah. Just me? Okay. It's important. Six. Okay. So, uh, that's a nine, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah, the it's dot is where the uh, dot is. Okay. So, 
all you really taste is rich soil, but rich to the point to where... Tastes like chocolate? <laughs> not quite. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, it tastes more like, um, in real life, you know how potting soil is? Uh -huh. Like, filled with nitrogen? Mm -hmm. uh, it's got that kind of, like, rich, fluffy texture. Mm -hmm. uh, almost uh, out of nowhere... Behind from one of these trees, there is a uh, figure that starts to emerge, possibly out of the tree, possibly just uh, almost as like a, a magical illusion has uh, dropped from her form. But this figure wearing a uh, brightly colored, multicolored uh, shawl, mm -hmm. um, tall, like over 10 feet tall, oh, wow. so okay. almost like a... a, a almost like a giant to okay. you. Um, and you've probably actually experienced hill mm -hmm. giants back in the real world. Um, but this figure is over 10 feet tall, wearing this beautiful gossamer headdress and gown that seems to be shifting colors, hmm. not only with the light, but with her movement. Every light in the color spectrum uh, is represented. Okay. And at first, you just think that it's it's almost dazzling. Mm -hmm. At first, you just think that it's the cowl or the gown, but then you realize when you look at her face, her skin also has that same shimmer oh. to it, and her eyes are beautiful. They're like bright sapphires that just pierce into you. And she stops at the side of the tree, and there's a little bit of a clearing between the tree and the stone ring where the worms are at, and she smiles at you, looks down at the worms, mm -hmm. and then speaks. Hello. Hi. Can I? I've been watching you. Wow, I, I am just tasting some dirt. <laughs> I heard a rumor from a toadstool. Oh, I heard a rumor, too. Are you Coco? I am! Hi! Hi, it is lovely to meet you, Coco. Oh, it's lovely to meet you. What's you, your name? You may call me Queen Mab. Queen Mab. Yes. Okay. I hear from the toadstool that you need a little help. I do. I do. I'm looking for that tree. You know the one that has the portal on us so I can get back home? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. You would like to go back home? Yes. Well, I can help you with that <gasps> if you would like. You can? I can send you home right now. Uh, and as she speaks, as she's speaking to you, and, and it seems like you're excited about uh -huh. this, her skin tone changes to like a bright gold skin tone, and her hair becomes copper, almost like yours. Oh. Uh, it's almost like a reflective yeah. kind of thing. Um, and uh, she makes no movement when she moves. It sounds, almost as she moves, is oh. almost as if she's walking upon the wind itself. You also notice that the worms stop wriggling when she steps into the clear. Uh, oh, uh, st stop right there. I'm not going to move any closer. Okay, good, because I said stop right there. You did. I did, thank you. I'm curious. I also am curious. You seem to be floating. Yes. Do you not have legs? Oh, I have. As you can see, I have legs. They're very, in my opinion, beautiful legs. They are very beautiful. I just like to keep my footsteps light. Oh. I like to observe and not be observed. I understand. I have a question, Queen You're Map. very demanding, but yes. I'm just so curious. Why... Um, and how did your skin color like just change like that? Like you look like me. It's almost like I'm looking in the mirror, but you're, I mean, you're much more glamorous, but you know. I like you. You're very complimentary. <laughs> oh, thanks. I am, hmm, how could I put it? I am a queen of the Fae. Oh. And so my whim is my being. 
Oh my goodness. Well, it's so nice to meet you. I have not heard about you, oh. which is weird because I I was adopted by the Fae. I know. I, oh, you do. I've been watching you a long for, time. But for how long? How long have I been here? Well, before we get into any of that, I'd like to know if I can help you. Oh. Perhaps we could help each other. Perhaps. Oh, well... What is it that you need help with? Well, um, I would like to offer a deal, perhaps. Hmm. I'll send you home. Okay, keep talking. But in the process of sending you home, you must help me find a way there as well. Well, you can come if you want. It's not that easy. Well, but if we find the portal, we can just... Go in the portal. I think that's how portals work. I don't uh, know. I've never been through. You see her tone shift a little bit. She seems to get frust- slightly frustrated. Oh. And says, as I said, um, <clears throat> it's a little bit more complicated than that. Okay. Yes. The worms start to, when she, when she gets, when she smiles at you and her face turns gold, they crawl towards her. And when she gets a little frustrated, they, they slink away. To the other side of the metal or the stone ring. By the way, when you say you're adopted by the Fae, mm-hmm. there are what's called Eladrin in mm-hmm. this world. The Eladrin are the elves of the Feywild. Mm-hmm. They're essentially your like Kin. ancestors. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that have assisted you and helped you. Not necessarily the all fae. the Fae, mm-hmm. just the Eladrin specifically. Mm, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. But they're so they're elves. They're, they're a type elf. of elf. They're a type of elf. Just like you are a wants. wood elf, mm-hmm. Eladrin actually represent the seasons. So there's a summer Eladrin, a winter Eladrin, a fall, autumn. yeah, autumn, uh, <laughs> spring, and their their personalities uh-huh. tend to be that of the season. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you were discovered mm-hmm. once you were wandering around in the Feywild by these Eladrin. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that helped you, mm-hmm. but they have no idea how to get back or how to get to your world. Mm-hmm. And so they were the ones that said, "You're just gonna have to, you're just Find gonna have it. to figure it out on your own." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And now that you're looking at Queen Mab and you're and you're getting a little bit understanding of who this entity is you get the feeling that she's that her prismatic hair and and skin colors are taking up various shades of aladrin for example yeah. so the copper hair color would be you would find in a uh-huh. summer aladrin mm-hmm. her her golden skin tone would be a summer aladrin and as she gets a little frustrated you see that her hair turns more of a fall color brownish with a little bit of red tinge and her 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 skin turns more uh more like a natural skin tone like my own. Oh, um, ooh, you're changing so quickly. I am not always patient. Oh, oh. Mm. I hope we can still be friends. I really like patient uh, and friends. And when you say that, she, again, back to the golden skin tone oh. and redhead copper color. I would love for us to be friends. Oh, that sounds so nice. You know how we could be friends? I could help you. Correct. Okay, I'm not sure how to do that, but I could try. This is exactly what I want. If you could just say the words, I promise to help you, Queen Mab, when I enter the other side of the portal. I say that we find the portal, and then as you're trying to cross through the portal, I say those things. Is that what you said? No, I want you to say them now so that I can share more with you. Oh. Let's call it a deal. Okay, give me one word at a time and I'll repeat it. Of course. Okay. (laughs) I promise to help you. No, one word at a time. I I promise promise to to help. Okay, I have a question. I wondered. Uh, As you say that, her face turns again brown hair, red on the edges, and a clear skin tone like my own. Yes? Oh, wow. Are you... Okay, I just have to ask. Are you mad at me? Are you going to help me or not? And when she says that, her hair turns deep, a a, a blinding white, and her skin turns a a purplish slate color. 
Will you help me or not? Oh, wow, you are scaring me. I don't like this. Uh, and she, she, her form seems to embiggen in front of you, and the, and the area around you, the light seems to dim. Those uh, worms that you saw in the, in the circle uh, dart into the dirt, and they stop moving. Oh, wow, things are really changing here. You are just you embiggening. You do not want to... Mm Anger me, child. I'm sorry. I just, ha I just have questions. I don't know you. Okay. She, uh, when you say that, she turns back to the the brown hair, red on the edges, and a clear skin tone like my own. Okay. Understood. I get it. Listen, I get it. I ask a lot of questions. The thing is, I just don't exactly know how long I've been here, and I. I want to be friends with you, like I want to help you, and also I want you insight to help check. me. You make an insight check there. Are you deceiving okay. or are you being honest? I'm being honest. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Roll, uh, roll, roll for me real quick, just so we know how, how good. So she's nice. moderately persuasive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and as you say that, she again turns golden skin toned and her hair turns copper. Just so you know, this isn't abnormal in the Feywild. Okay. Like, emotions affect right. the visual. The, the okay, yeah. the visual. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, the plants feel the the woods, the stone, the babbling brook. Time itself seems to have a will exactly. of its own. Yeah. Everything has a will of its own. Yeah. And if the Feywild wants you to stay, you stay forever. If mm. they if they want you to go, uh -huh. you're gone. Okay. It's it's as if it's as if the realm is alive. Okay. It's a living, breathing thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I have a question, Queen Mab. Yes. Okay. So are you supposed to leave the Feywild? Well, I Like are you allowed to? I can do what I please when I please. Oh well then why do you need my help? Uh you see a like a, a, almost like it, it it flashes over her, but goes back to the golden skin tone. But it's that next Yee. phase where oh. she's a little bit more uh. autumn than summer. Uh, seems to flood over her, but she seems to calm it. I, there are rules, rules that I do that I must follow. Oh, I hate rules. I know they can be so restrictive. I don't even understand them. Ex I barely understand them myself. Oh, see, we are definitely on the same this page. This is why I've been watching you. I feel like we are kindred. I feel like maybe I met you once. I don't recall that myself, but there are plenty of things that I don't recall. So it may be possible. Anything is possible in the Fade Wild. But I know, I've been watching long enough, you yearn for home. Oh, I do. You yearn for your world of normalcy. Oh, I do, and I so badly want to want to find if my family. If you so badly want to find your family, then help me. Agree to my deal, and I will assist immediately. Okay, let's try those words again. I. I. Coco. Coco. Oh, Alder that's new. Shadow. Alder Shadow. Promise. That's my name. Prom. I promise. To, to assist, assist Queen, Queen Mab. Okay, so here's the thing. I am very curious about how you are going to help me. Like, do you have a map? Like, do you have a? Are you just gonna look around with me? Like, two sets of eyes are better than one, kind of thing? Or like, I will be able to communicate with you through words, through through plants and, and creatures mm. and various other. The beings that exist that are close to our realm in yours. Uh, okay. Like they're in my realm, but they're in this realm? Yes, much like the tree. Oh. Do you understand? Barely, but yes. Good. So, should we start our deal again? <sighs> Do not play with me, child. Oh, Okay. Are you ready? I don't know. I have this really weird... My lips are kind of getting itchy. You are more just... than welcome to find your own way home. Well, what if we just walk around together for a little bit? Not what I'm interested in. I could work on the words. Just say them with me now. Are you ready? I will say them with Think you. Think of your family. 
I am thinking of. Think you. of the elves that miss you so. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Why do you want to go there? Why don't you want to stay here? It's kind of amazing. I mean, I'm kind of sick of it, but it's just because I really want to get back home. You know what I mean? I want to experience what it's like to be in your world. Oh. Couldn't you ask one of the animals that would... I have done years of discussion, years of gathering information. I want to go there myself. Oh, it's so beautiful. I barely remember it, but I remember it being really green. So then you are ready to go and you would like to take me with you. Oh. Okay, so here's the thing. I do want to... Okay, let's do it. Let's just do it. Let's just be crazy. Let's just do it. Uh, and as soon as you say that, uh, again, her, 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 uh, she was getting closer and closer. Almost less drastic, but slowly shade changing closer and closer to the to the winter uh, version oh. of her that you saw. And as soon as you say, okay, let's just get crazy with it, it snaps all the way back to the summer version. Oh. And she's like, great. Repeat after me. Repeat after me. I. I. Coco. Coco. Alder Shadow. Alder Shadow. Promise. Promise. To. To. Assist. Assist. Queen. Queen. Mab. Mab. As. As. Soon. Soon. As. as I. I. Cross. Eat. Sorry. Cross. Cross. The. The. Threshold. Threshold. She snaps her fingers ah! and the portal opens up. So you knew where it was all along? I told you I could take you home. Well, we didn't have to go very far. You could have just said that. Well, now I can share with you whatever you would like. You've agreed to the deal. What would you like to know? Oh. Well, are you going to go through that with me? I cannot. Okay. Oh, really Every time I try... We're going to be friends. I, I would love to go with you. Oh. Every time I... Let me show you. Okay. And she steps through the portal. And, and right as she steps through the portal, it's almost as if... Uh, as if it shifts to a different plane. So uh, the portal you could actually look through okay. and you actually see, see the Nala River, which you remember is on the edge of the Elderberry Wilds. Mm -hmm. But as she steps through, it shifts. You see moon, you see stars, you see the, you see the galaxy and uh, the atmosphere. And then all of a sudden, another portal opens up and she spit out and she's now standing in front of you again and the portal closes behind her. And then the portal that she originally opened up, so there's two. Okay. That shifts back to the Nala River. Oh, okay. So she opened up another. No, no she, didn't she didn't open it. She steps through, mm -hmm. but it shifts. Okay. Imagine like a tunnel, right? Mm -hmm. You're going through the tunnel, and as you're going through the tunnel, instead of exiting the opposite side, it gets turned into a roundabout that spits you out the same way that you just went in. Okay. Very similar to that. Right. But you, as you look through this portal, you clearly see your home. You mm -hmm. see the Nala River. You see the Elderberry Wilds far beyond that. Mm -hmm. You see the rain clouds and a little bit of mud. You see the grasslands. Like, you you see home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when she gets spit back out, there's definitely a moment of her, like feeling discombobulated almost like she's uh she's discombobulated she's she's shook okay and then she eventually calms and collects and writes herself and she's back to normal but that takes a few moments now you understand i understand what i cannot leave I'm spit back here every time I try. But I repeated those words after you. Wasn't that the deal? That is the deal. And now when you return to the other side, you must help me find the reason why. Oh. Mm. See, I was going to suggest that I hold one end of a rope, like a viney rope kind of thing, mm. and then you hold on to the other end. I walk through the portal... And then I kind of like guide you through and pull you through. It could work. I'm just saying. Coco. Yes. I am very, very old. Oh, I've you look so good. I have great knowledge. I've tried many things. Okay. You tried the vine thing then? Yes. Oh, okay. I've tried not okay. just physical in different forms, in different realms, shifting to other parts of the world and unable to enter 
yours. That's sad. I agree. I am so happy. And again, now she turns back to that summer Aladrin look that you've agreed to help me. Yes. Well, you did find me the portal, so a deal's a deal. A deal is a deal. The portal is there. I okay. will be in touch. Oh. Okay, send me a message. I certainly will. Okay. So then Coco steps through the portal. Yeah. One foot at a time. She only has two, so it's... Like... As soon as you start to enter the portal, it sucks you through. Oh. And as you're getting sucked through, you can feel that same feeling that you had before where you were falling, but then it felt like you were falling upwards, uh -huh. but then you were falling downwards, but then you were falling sideways. Like, it's almost like gravity is broken for a moment, and but you're still falling the entire time. And as you're falling, you can hear... <laughs> <laughs> and then the portal closes behind you that gets cut off and you're just floating until finally you pop out on the other side smack into a big mud puddle and you're just covered head to toe in mud and you immediately know where you're at you're on the muddy banks of the Nala River the Nala River is almost like the Mississippi it's big, flat, wide and it floods uh -huh. and this is obviously after some rain had hit and so the rain has drained down from the banks down into the river, and you can see this big, muddy river flowing southward. And to the north, you know that it eventually hits the Anatox Basin, but across the river is the Elderberry Wilds, which is your home. That's where okay. the uh, wood elves of Artavos live. You know that there's a bridge to the south. You know this. I mean, unless the bridge has been wiped away or, or destroyed or something. Uh, or you could try to swim, but the Nala River, because you can see the rain clouds, the Nala River, river is starting to rise. swell and rise. And you can see, you know, like the muddy rapids as this rainwater starts to collect. Make a perception check. Okay. Wow. Eight. Yeah, she is 15. killing, killing the rolls. rolls, man, for sure. <laughs> so you, as you uh, pick yourself up out of the mud and try to wipe off the mud that's on your face and on your clothes, uh, and you, you see the Nala River is swelling, you can also see a, a bit to the north that there appears to be that. Have you ever seen there's rain in the distance and it's moving towards you, but you can see it because the rain is so heavy? Mm -hmm. uh, it's Sheets. like that. Yeah. Sheets of rain okay. falling in the north, appearing to move in your direction. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. I am filthy. <laughs> I could definitely stand for a shower. Well, you are getting rained on right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I am already yeah. It's already on. starting yeah. to... Oh. He's saying it's okay. raining, okay. but in, in coming in the from distance. the north, the, your direction is like a torrent Heavy. of oh. rain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, gosh. I, I, I got to get over there. I got to get to that bridge. Okay, there was a bridge where... Oh, it's south. Yeah. Make a nature check. Survival check. Survival, Survival yeah. check. She's a ranger, so. Yeah, even then. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're pretty sure that you got to go south. Okay, I'm going south. Okay. So you're beelining it down this yeah. river, right? I hope and I'm you're running trying, like this. That's how you run. <laughs> this is how all rangers run. That's why they run so fast. Amazing. Yeah. Um, Last rider. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> You're running south trying not to slip in the mud and what have you, and you're getting further away from those rain clouds, which is good. That means they're not they're not Going catching up on me. you mm -hmm. unless you stop. However, as you're running that direction, you notice that there's an old tree that's fallen over from all of the water and the softening of the earth, and there is a figure trapped underneath that dead tree. And the figure is writhing and kicking and hissing and screaming. And it has what appears to be some kind of stick or staff in its hand that it's trying to use to like pry the log, the fallen tree, up off of it, but failing miserably, wearing thick. You're assuming that they were brown robes before they got muddy, but they're already muddy, so you're not quite sure because it's brown on brown. But wearing thick brown robes with the hood pulled up. Oh. But you notice... And you, and you can see this immediately, that if the banks of the river continue swelling the way they have been, this person is going to drown. 
because they're trapped underneath this tree. And right away you clock that that seems to be the source of the panic, is that they are smart enough to realize that true. that's happening. Very true. Oh, okay. And you're a ways away at this point. Okay. You're kind of like running up on, again, running up, yeah, <laughs> on, onto this okay. figure. Okay. Hey, 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 hi, hi, are you, oh, you clearly need my help. Okay, listen, you don't have any leverage. So the figure pulls the hood up so that it covers his face. Wait, before you come closer, you must know I have been cursed. <gasps> How did that happen? Wait. The hag. The hag? A hag. A hag. Oh, there it's are just one of many. Oh, gosh. I hate it when that happens. Okay, okay. Um. So wait, If can I get close to you? Because yes. the river's coming. I just the didn't want coming. you to be alarmed. And he pulls the hood back. Ah! And he has the head of a copperhead snake. Oh. The body of a stout dwarf. Huh. But the head is clearly that of a snake. And it catches you off guard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is a... Okay. You were either cursed... I... Listen, you can tell me later whether you were cursed and the head got turned into a snake and or the dwarf body. I don't know. I you was can... a dwarf. Once. You were a dwarf. Okay, then. Yes. Okay, well, okay. I want to hear that story, but let's figure out how we can get you out of here. Use my staff. Okay, I'll use it. Pry it underneath okay. the log. Uh, Give us a strength, strength check. Twelve. I remember your character not being horribly strong. So yeah. I'm going to say that what you do is you manage to get the stick underneath there and push it. And it doesn't come completely off of the person, but it does roll instead of it being on his back or, or lower back, it does roll down onto his legs. Oh. And he grabs your ankle as if, like, to use you as a leverage. leverage. Okay. Yeah. Almost. Ah, okay, Ooh, that's really tight. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't move when I, you're holding on I to know. me. It's just crushing my legs. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you're crushing my leg. You're very he strong. He lets go of your... He oh. is very strong, actually. Huh. He lets go oh. of your leg, and he uh, starts to reach out with these very... And by the way, his skin is reptilian. Yeah. Even though he's got this dwarf stout dwarven body, body, you can see it's mixed with snake skin. Okay. He gr uh, grabs onto the mud and begins to pull against the weight on his legs. Now, lift the tree. Okay. Use the staff. Uh, oh, right, I'll use the staff. That's a good idea. Oh, it's stuck. Make it's a, stuck. Make, strength check. make another strength check. Oh, bad news. Oh, my God. What was it? it oh. I rolled terribly as well. <laughs> um, uh, he is exhausted at this point, so he lays flat. You slip and fall and hit your butt, okay. and you look over at him, and he's just laying there with his head kind of like half in, half out of the mud, and you're completely covered in mud. At and this the point rain too. begins to grow, and the, the droplets get huge, very large droplets. It begins to pour. Oh, no. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> I don't either. I'm just just water getting in your <laughs> mouth. Just water from the pour. It's pouring. It's all over you and getting in your I, mouth. I don't... I really... I just... What should we do? I think we should... I, You're I, able to keep the, the water out yeah. of your mouth. By the way, you have all of your equipment right. on you. So all the things that you were traveling with in the Feywild, you still have. So if that means any of your gear would be helpful in the situation, you have it. I don't think I have any gear that's helpful. Rope. Mm. Rope? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, a ranger without rope? Probably has uh, rope, yes. Probably a bit of I did of offer rope. up that viney rope. <laughs> you did. There you yeah, go. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. There you go. Okay. So what would you like to do? I would like to tie the, uh, tie the viney rope yeah. to... The tree, okay, and then find a place to go 
uh, wind it around and then use the staff to oh, twist nice. and turn. Okay. Nice. So two rolls. Okay. The first one is going to be essentially creating this leverage, this construct, and then the second one will be strength. But if your first roll is successful, your second roll will be at advantage because you have done this mm -hmm. extra okay. tactic. So go ahead and give us uh, survival. Yeah. Oh. Terrible. So the leverage thing isn't working. You're slipping in the mud. You try to stick the staff in and wrap the rope around it and pull, and the, the staff just comes right out. So unfortunately, you're just stuck on the bank of the Nala River, but you're not in the mud anymore, which is good. So you're not at disadvantage. Holding onto this rope, you can go ahead and try to give it another pull, but it's just a regular strength check, not, okay. not with advantage. Okay, so you're pulling on this. He reaches out again with these large, strong arms and pulls. Ooh. And with your powers combined, he slips out from underneath the tree with a wet Whoa. as he pops out. As he pops out, you're expecting him to still be winded, weak. And to um, thank me. <laughs> uh, well, of course. Uh, but he actually stands up. And as he stands up, even though he is of dwarven height, so even shorter than you, uh -huh. he pops up almost like a, like a, like an athlete would, like yeah. a, like an Olympic athlete. Like Very he's, spry, yes. Ready like to he, go. he almost kips up, kips himself exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. Wh which he would if he wasn't standing mm -hmm. in mud. Right, right, right. So he pops up and immediately starts to look around and flips his hood back over his head. Thank you. Uh, you have helped me. I am at your service. Really? He nods. What do you desire? Oh my gosh. I have been waiting for somebody to ask me this all day. <laughs> okay, well, first of all, here's your staff. Thank you. So thank you. That's good. What's your name, by the way? I'm Coco. Yes, I am Reinhold. Reinhold? Yes. So Reinhold. Yes, well, it is a dwarven name. Oh. You seem sad about that. That seems pretty cool. Fine. Well, my people will not accept me in this state. Oh my goodness, that's I so was sad. Seeking the elves. I hear they have strong shamans that can undo a hag's curse. <gasps> yes, I have heard of this too. I don't know who could do it or where they are exactly, but we could find them together. Do you want to go together? Yes. Okay. I know where that village is. Okay. Uh, and he points across the Nala River. Yes. I don't know how to get over there. I was looking for a bridge. You want to help me find the bridge? Yes. Okay. Let us go. Let us go. And as you're going, uh, you start heading south. He doesn't run like that. <laughs> okay. You run like that. He more runs like this. Oh, okay. He's like Rocky. He's like doing okay. the... He's not like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you guys run. And as you're running that direction, because this took so much time, the sheets of rain are now pelting you. And oh. it's getting to the point to where you're like, do I seek shelter? Do I just get away from the river? Like, this is getting dangerous. You finally get to the bridge and you see it you see the remnants of the bridge you now know where you're at exactly there once was a bridge here that had been swept away by flooding which makes sense there is a bigger bridge to the south but there's enough pieces of this bridge to where you might be able to make your way across with your rope okay and with uh Reinhold's help okay so you start to make your way out onto the bridge and you see, uh, um, and it's not super structurally sound, so you're kind of being careful about it. You see that there's some rocky outcroppings on the other side that you might be able to lasso or get the rope across. Mm -hmm. uh, and Reinhold, at this point, is winded uh, because oh. he almost died and he was running alongside an elven ranger who's got way more movement than he does. By the way, you have 35 feet of movement because you're a wood elf. 
and you're not really restricted by difficult terrain. I so he's he, like, I thought he had like kind of superpowers. Well, he's like, strong, but he's stout, right? Okay, so he's not okay. necessarily, you know, yeah. a uh, sprinter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you get out your rope, mm-hmm. and you're just about ready to throw it across to lasso it mm-hmm. when something sharp stabs you from behind kind of near your butt actually but more like in your upper hip and as you look back Reinhold has sunk both of his snake fangs into your side and you immediately feel this venom start to course through your feel the heat rise through your neck as it travels towards the brain barrier he pushes you into the Nala River and as you fall into the river and begin to be overflowed by this now uh, swelling river, your your muscles begin to seize up and your eyes begin to start unseen. And the rain pours down upon you and swirls and you get swallowed by the Nala River. And that's the end of your sessions. Welcome to the team. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> that was really great. You did so wonderful. <laughs> Well, yeah, honestly, yeah, there is dancing. Well Look at that yeah, dancing yeah. inside. Yeah.
Welcome, Serena. Uh, welcome to the team. We're so excited to have you. <laughs> I'm uh, so excited to be here. Like, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so this is your session zero uh -huh. for Octavius... Box cutter. Ooh, Octavius box cutter. The first to flee the nest. The first to flee the nest. Uh, well, give us... We like to, We have been starting these with a uh, small description of your character, so please give us one. Sure. Uh, so Octavius is a small round owlin who is uh, brown fleckled with white with two round globular yellow eyes that appear slightly haunted. They're just like very large. Um, he wears a uh, a hooded like cloak that's sort of like the texture of a, an, a hoodie, but like hoodie make it fantasy. Uh, a, uh, and that's navy blue with a nice wrap shirt and black little bloomer shorts. <laughs> um, yeah, and they're just a, a little rogue. A little... How tall? So they are about four foot one. Okay. And small. 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 Like, like small. Not very bulky or anything like that. Not bulky, but yeah. very like um, wide. Right. Yeah, but fluffy, I guess, would be the proper descriptor. Right. Fluffy, <laughs> for sure. Uh -huh. And Owlin, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Great. So um, we'll get right into your sessions here. Here we go. So uh, you are part of the Vanguard Inquisitors, right? Did I get that right? You did. Yep. That's perfect. So um, you are one of a few in your society. Mm -hmm. You, uh, the one that you, your rival, Lenore as well, um, is also a vanguard, as is your uncle. And your uncle's name is, and just make sure I get this right. Yes, yes, yes. Uncle Professor Professor General Jeb Jeb. That's his full title, yes. Correct. You nailed it, crushed this. it. <laughs> I love this already. So, uh, Uncle Professor General Jeb Jeb. Uh -huh. uh, you are a subterranean owl species, yes. right? So you live 100% under the ground. Mm -hmm. You know that 300 years ago, your people, uh, it's been passed down through story, through your own people, your own society, that your people uh, rose up out of the animus just like all of the other animal humanoids that exist on the North Island of Toss. Um, and so since that time, your society has kind of treated this like uh, the apocalypse, Right, you live oh, under. Oh yeah, we live like the surface is scary. The surface the scary is very place. scary. Right, yeah. early on in your peep, that's what your stories are about. Uh -huh. the, the surface is a scary place. It's wild out there. Yes. It is dangerous. So we're gonna stay right here. Um, and so it's another day in staying right here when you report to your uncle, Professor General Jeb Jeb. I did to, this to you. You did this to me. <laughs> but I'm on board. Because I love it. Like I said, I, I have, since you give us your backstory, I've been so excited about this. So, um, <clears throat> Uncle Professor General Jeb Jeb, uh, every morning, sends you on a patrol. You, Lenore, uh, sometimes himself even going out and mm. patrolling the area. Because as you know, there's a secret that your society is keeping. Yes. The obsidian veins that exist underneath this uh, mountain. Right, the Atos Peak. The Atos Peak is the largest mountain south of the Mavros mountain range. So the Mavros mountain range, which is north of where you're at, is massive. There's even like a volcano smack in the middle of it. But southeast of that, along the eastern coastline, looking out onto the uh, uh, Rasa uh, Ocean, is uh, the Atos Peak. Uh, a smaller mountain range, and then Brazuth. Brazuth is a large cave. That cave is where uh, goblins, hobgoblins, and bugbears reside, which you've had very little interaction with up until this point. Mm -hmm. The main reason why is because you live in that little pocket at the bottom of Atos Peak, and the Uzbad River, which flows off of the Atos Peak down to the south, creates this natural barrier so that you're kind oh. of pocketed away. Uh, it would be really hard for anyone to get to you because the one bridge that actually existed over the Uzbad River was destroyed in a large fight between uh, the hobgoblins, goblins, and bugbears and those who lived 
across the water. Mm. I don't even want to tell you who those people are because I don't think your people would have ever gone that far. Yeah. You have everything you need. Right. You have fresh water. There's all kinds of uh, things to eat underground and above ground in the area that you're in. The one thing I will tell you is at the top of the Atos Peak, there are a group of Aarakocra that live that your people have always wanted to make a connection with, but have never ventured far enough up into the mountain mm-hmm. to speak with them. And largely this has occurred because your particular society, society of Allen do not have a flight speed. Right. Mm-mm. They in fact have a burrowing speed. Yes. So... Hard to get to the top of a mountain unless you dug I your way up. I can only go right? down. Oh, yeah, I <laughs> oh, can go down. Yeah. Up, that's a long way to dig. And, and gra- most of it's probably stone that you can't dig through. And gra- so, gravity works different when right. you're going up. <laughs> Correct. So. <laughs> Correct. And depending on how dense the thing is. Yes. Right? So very different than air. Mm-hmm. So um, recently, in the last couple of days, uh, Lenore is the first to, to report this back. Um, there, there have been sounds of digging in the in the normal tunnels that you that is considered your tor- territory, uh, especially around where a lot of the minerals seem minerals and obsidian that you've come to to know and protect and and keep secret um, uh, around those tunnels where those tend to be most concentrated seems to be where this digging sound comes from, um, and it starts off very faint and only Lenore, your rival. Uh, your rival, uh, rival. Well, yeah, your rival, yeah. Uh, rival. rival. Uh, <laughs> she's so strong. She's so strong, uh, right? And, and uh, we haven't yet identified that you're Octavia, so you are he, him, correct? Or is it he, he, they. they? He, they. Mm-hmm. He, they. So, uh, how old is? Um, I would say, because Owlin and you know fantasy races have different right. age markers. Yeah. I would say um, equivalent to like human twenty. Great. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So still pretty young. Young yeah. adult. Young, young adult. adult. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm a YA novel. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't even know what the ranges of young adult are, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. So um, uh, today is an, a day just like any other. Uh, reporting to Uncle Professor General Jeb Jeb. Uh, know you're going to find yourself standing next to Lenore, and you both are going to receive your uh, job for the day. Uh, and as you get there today. You've seen it on occasion. Your uncle has a, a bit of what looks like a mouse bone. It, it's the closest that you've really gotten to it. it. He's never talked about it. It's sort of a thing that's just, it, it's like he picked it up and it's a lucky charm. Okay. Uh, and today he's, as you as you uh, come into the, his chamber where he stays, uh, just outside of where all the children are kept, um, he's... It's like a worry stone a it's little bit, It's kind of like bit, a worry right? stone. Okay. It is. And he's rubbing it today. It's on a string. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's yellowed, but seems to hold up even though he, he throughout your most of your life, has been using it as a worry stone. It's totally normal to you. You've seen this numerous times. It's a thing he found sometime, long time ago in the caverns. He assumes it's a mouse bone. As far as you know, that's exactly what it yeah. is. So he's rubbing this as you enter. Uh and he goes, oh, 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 I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Are you? Hello. Oh, uh, I was going to, because I think that like uh, Octavius gets super weird because they notice that they're not alone. Yeah. And it's usually Uncle Jeb Jeb. Right. But in public, mm-hmm. it's. And Lenore is there as soon as you enter the chamber. Right. And um, noticing that. He's rubbing that. I know that something's happening. Something's a little off. Um, but catches themselves and goes, uh, General Professor! <laughs> you may relax. <laughs> Lenore, I would like you to do your normal patrol. <laughs> Remember, both of you, we are still looking for those digging sounds and any signs of encroachment into our territory. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what do you want me to do? Well, uh, my dear Otto, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Octavius, um, oh, <laughs> we need you to check the veins today. <laughs> We've There have been some reports from other Owlin. They have heard uh, digging in the area. <clears throat> I have to check the veins today? I checked them uh, the other day. It, I, I, 
I mean, yes. Habeas. Yes, uh, sir. I sure I will check those veins. And you see, you see, uh, Uncle Professor General Jeb Jeb, uh, kind of look over at Lenore, and you can just see Lenore with a half crook smile, mm-hmm. knowing that once again she has shown to be better than you, uh, and she knows it, and mm-hmm. you can see it on her face. After I check the veins, which is an incredibly important yes, job. Yes, it is. You know it is. It is <laughs> so much value to that job. May I go to the surface to perhaps investigate the digging sound as reported by Lador? Uh, he pauses and he kind of scratches the, his own, the part of your, uh, that is spotted. He scratches that area, a, a thing that he seems to do when he's thinking hard. And he goes, oh, I hadn't considered from the surface. Are you sure that you are prepared? Oh, I've been I've been studying so much surface things. I know I know so many facts, and I'm agile. And I would like to attempt uh, to show how agile I am with a um, a cartwheel. Okay, make an acrobatics check. Great, great. Ba ba ba. Okay, well, that is a natty one. So, funny enough, (laughs) everyone has rolled terribly, except for Carrie. Really? And I mean everyone. (laughs) So, uh, So it's it's par for the course that you (laughs) fail miserably at this task. So, Otto, uh, getting obviously super excited and trying to show Mm -hmm. off, uh, steadies himself and tries to do a backflip and lands right on the top of his head. Uh, to the point of where Uncle, Uncle Professor Jimmy goes, oh, What are you doing, no, Octavius? No, I'm, it's fine. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, dusts themselves off, puffs up in a little bit of embarrassment. Mm-hmm. Um, they are a bird, so they're not blushing per se, mm-hmm. but when they get rattled, their um, their feathers around their face kind of get bigger. Mm-hmm. So they look just like they have like, chubbier cheeks. Yeah. Um, and then goes, Uh... You saw, you, catching the enemy off surprise is is part of how we survive. So, are you surprised? I'm very surprised. And Lenore says, I'm not surprised at all. <clears throat> if I may, um, General, I would like to go on my patrol. And Uncle Professor Jeb Jeb, General Jeb Jeb says, oh, of course, of course, please, please. Uh, uh, and Lenore turns and leaves, leaving you two alone. What was that, Otto? Listen, Uncle, I just... She gets to go to the servers all the time. All the time. It's and I get to she acts stronger and more focused than you, Otto. We've had this discussion many times. <laughs> well, I could be strong and focused, too. Well, then prove it by going on this patrol and bringing back any information we find. I'm worried that the goblins and the bugbears yeah, the bug are encroaching on our territory and I don't I want to prevent a conflict <laughs> do you think that there would be they are unpredictable Otto you know this yeah there's no way to know don't be hostile if you do see any of them maybe try to understand why they are here okay but only if it feels safe. <laughs> Better to stay alive and bring me the information than to be caught by alone. <laughs> um, Otto kind of like tilts his head a little bit and kind of um, subconsciously grabs his um, left arm mm. and goes, right. right, you're right. Right. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll check the oars, and how about this? I complete my ex- inspection, and then perhaps um, you might accompany me to the surface? <laughs> Return to me with the information, and we'll have a conversation about it, okay? Okay, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Otto. Yes. I love you. I love you, too. Be safe. I will. Come back to me, Octavius. I will, sir! <laughs> Uh, and you make your way uh, to your patrol. Right. Um, as you're moving through the underground, the, the, this is where you live. It feels like natural. It's like yeah. you're walking down a, a street that you've been down every mm-hmm. day. Um, your territory, especially where you're going, this part of the territory 
you don't always patrol. It's not some. It's sort of on the edges of the territory. So most of the time, you you're just keeping these areas to make sure that they're cleared. Uh, yes. Looking okay. for footprints, tracks, all that kind of stuff. Normally, you're not trying to look. There's no one to find. Right. It's just like like you said. It's a neighborhood stroll. I'm not yeah. expecting anyone to jump right. out at me. Right. It's just like the only difference is that you have heard some. You even in the yes. last day or two have heard some digging. Just not in this area. Right. Other owl and have reported that there's digging in this area, mm -hmm. which is odd, especially because this is where the secret mostly is. Mm -hmm. Now, the best part about this secret is it's so far off of your territory, deeper into the mountain, that most things don't come this far. So that's why this is your patrol. Mm -hmm. You realize that it becomes very important because normally this is not a thing we have to worry about. This is new. Yeah, the Aarakocra right. are also territorial. So if anybody started to go up into the Atos Peak, mm. they would make sure that that person found their way back down. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah. right. So that's why you're partially protected because you have these winged warriors flying up about above you. Yeah, just yeah. like our above guardians. Yes, correct. Yeah. And so this is a little, your your cousins yeah. are protecting cousins. you above. Yeah. Um, so this is a little odd to you. So mm -hmm. it's not that, it, it's a normal day, but there's mm -hmm. a little bit of an edge to you as, as normal is with Otto. Yeah. Uh, and as you begin patrolling, um, you first you see the first of the veins of the obsidian. Now, um, for those, uh, may, just do a general description of obsidian yeah. if they're not aware. Sure. Uh, obsidian is a it's it's a lot like slate. It's a opaque black lava rock, um, and when you tap it uh, perpendicular to its striations inside, mm -hmm. it chips easy. So you can make it into like weaponry and uh, arrowheads and the like. But when you, when it, when anything, any force moves in the direction of its striations, it's very, very strong. As strong as iron, sometimes even more. Right. And oh. sharp. And sharp. Yeah. Uh, especially when hit perpendicular, made sharp. But essentially, so you could have a, a pillar of obsidian that weight on the top of it could be thousands of tons and would still be able to hold that. Oh. But you could press on the side and it would, and it would shatter or crumble. Um, just one, one of the reasons things. why your people don't necessarily use it uh -huh. because it's dangerous. Right. Yeah. Like if you were to make a, an obsidian club, let's say, and strike somebody with it, it could shatter and cut your hand right. and cut oh, you like as glass, well as right. Right. Yeah. much like glass. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a it's a really like fantasy substance even though it exists in real life mm -hmm. it's it's very fantastical but just to give you a little backstory uh it's it's highly prized especially among the animus especially mm. among the animal people and so that's why you that's why your people protect it that's why you don't use it because if someone were to see it on you they'd want to know where it came right. from right yeah. yeah so imagine it being like Gold. I was just thinking gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's people. like oh, right. yeah, well, yeah right. where your chain at? Like, yeah. yeah. In fact, people might even use it as a form of currency on this island mm -hmm. more so than gold, because the people here aren't as uh, civilized as the South Island. South Island would probably have like gold and silver and platinum, right. and, and maybe even like some probably just barter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's much more trade barter, but obsidian would be a highly valued commodity which okay. is why your society and family has made it very clear that this is to be protected mm -hmm. especially because it's value if anybody wanted to come get it they would be displacing you and your family and that's yeah. the last thing that you want and it's the last thing that even the Aarakocra want right mm -hmm. they don't want any of their peoples right. distant or not to be displaced so it's your job kind of to keep your societies to keep this a secret okay. um can't remove it uh so yeah. you gotta protect it. Um, and uh, you pass by one of the obvious larger veins that your family first found as they dug through the tunnels, or uh, through the dirt. And uh, as you pass by, you see sort of a, it, it, it catches a light. Even though you're underneath the ground and it's dark and your dark vision is activated, there's a little bit of a, a, a spark as you uh, pass by and you stop to look at it. Uh, and as you look at it, you can see just the faintest light 
Uh, you could shift out of dark vision. You know that's going to make it so that you can't see. Right. But if a light source, then you get color. So if there's light source, you can oh, get color. I didn't know dark vision did that. Yeah, dark vision is um, wow. black and white. It's bl- shades of gray. Yeah. That's changes so many things right? in my yeah. mind. Yeah. Great. Perfect. <laughs> um, so, y- yeah, so I'm going to turn my dark vision okay. off so I could uh, see what color this Absolutely. Is. So as you tur- as you shift your eyes to normal vision, yes. everything else kind of fades away and goes dark. But you see a bright red spot that then seems to lightning and it just as fast as it lightnings through the obsidian, it disappears. What was odd is obsidian is opaque. Yeah. It's fully opaque. You can't see through it even if you held it up to a light. So this is odd to you because it was as if you could see the light in the center of this big vein of obsidian it catches you off guard um with the flash i think otto um he reels back yeah. um because it, it's it's bright and i think the, the very disorienting course, feeling absolutely. right yeah it gets real bright all of a sudden right. especially if you just turn off your dark vision it makes perfect um, sense. so he tumbles backwards make and an I... acrobatics check. oh god oh please please dice Ooh. All uh, right, you know, but but, it, but it's better. Yeah. Six. Six. So you do a backflip and would totally land it yeah. if there wasn't a dirt wall literally behind you. Oh, so as you backflip, no. you literally backflip <laughs> into the wall and again landing on your head, kind of. Uh, um, uh, and and no damage it doesn't yeah. hurt you. You're just, just kind of embarrassed. Yeah, my pride is injured. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> no one around this time to see it. That's true. Just me. Good. Just you. Good. But good. Yeah. You still know you failed. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I think, sort of like, not like a prey animal, but mm-hmm. like, in that tumble in that backflip landing on my head. I like freeze Mm -hmm. and I'm looking. Okay. Is does it change? Is there anything different? No. In fact, it it seems quiet, and there's no more light that you see. But then you start to hear, ding, ding, ding. Right. These are those sounds of digging digging that you heard before. But they sound very close, a little further past the obsidian, uh, in the direction that you were already moving in your patrol. Oh no, oh no. Okay. Okay, we have to we have to shine. We have to okay. Um and so I'm gonna go towards um can you describe what sure. this this tunnel looks like? So I'm is it a straight tunnel and then I hear the sound of digging on um, the So a wall. yeah, it's you're kind of in a, a little bit of an antechamber because when when you dug the tunnel, okay. that part of the dirt that was touching the obsidian fell away easily and that's mm. how it was discovered. So there's a little bit of an alcove in this tunnel that is straight but then curves off to the right uh, as you move towards the patrol. So the sound is coming from in front of you, but it's a little bit further down in the cave to the right. And it sounds like it sounds louder to you because it's being echoed by the walls of stone uh, in the in, on the ground. Okay, um, so Otto um, remembers his training, mm-hmm. and he says, um, "Okay, uh, if we do a figure eight formation, we can." Great. Good. And um, so Otto, what they're going to do mm-hmm. is um, hearing the sound of digging, um, they're going to um, start um, trying to redirect the hole. Okay. So I think that in in knowing that there's someone down there and knowing that they're digging straight, what I want to do is tr- like uh, anti-dig, okay. I guess. You want to try to collapse that part? Collapse that part so I can turn them around. Okay. So they're trying to dig a hole straight, and I want to like turn their hole, their their dig. So you want to try to 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 build a natural tunnel that turns them away. Yes. Okay. So you're gonna to have to get closer to the sound because it's a little bit further down, and you can't really see uh, further in the tunnel. Um, so you will have to travel a little bit forward past your obsidian uh, Perfect. outcropping. Yes, yeah, so that's what um, Otto would like to do. Okay. So, in- is he doing this at normal speed? Is he being stealthy? Stealthy. Uh, okay. So make a stealth check for me. I'm rallying so much. (laughs) (laughs) Please. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, 12 plus 7. Oh, 19. Perfect. So as you uh, move your way down um, this this tunnel, 
um, the sounds of digging start to become even more clearer and clearer. And as you get closer and closer, you start to see clumps of dirt fall off the wall just in front of you. And sure enough, a hand, <laughs> uh, yellow skinned, uh, slightly yellow skinned, greenish a little bit, uh, small, a small hand, uh, make a, um, a knowledge check, uh, nature. Okay, that is a 11. Um, you're not quite sure, but it makes it very clear as a goblin pulls its head through this dirt, uh, displacing it even more, and or and sort of just flops out of the hole. Uh, <laughs> Can uh, I try to push them back in? Oh, oh absolutely, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, so you run up. You run up. Hold on. Yeah. Make a perception roll. Here. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, that is a. Uh, God, my brain just shut off. Sixteen. So. Just so you know, mm -hmm. before you get up to this goblin, you audibly hear from outside of the hole another goblin say in something in goblin. Do you speak, Do you goblin, speak goblin? No. Okay, so you hear. I support. I got the opposite. I got my so so one like, goblin. The on the ground is re is responding. I'm Scalabo. Yeah. Uh, and you see the one get up, and as he get as he gets up, that's when you're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and he goes, Go to <laughs> uh, and you push, he's already, as you come up, yeah. he's already fallen in. And so you kind of push him, uh -huh. but you push him up against the wall. And sure enough, in through the hole that you've pushed him up against, you can see another yellow goblin face that kind of looks at you. Yeah, and he's got like bits and pieces of rat hanging out of his mouth. Like he was obviously eating a dead rat when he was having this conversation <laughs> with this other goblin. <laughs> And with your with your with your your uh -huh. perception observation with your perception check uh, so high, you also quickly notice that the one that you've pushed up against the wall seems to have his trousers full of some sort of uh, material. It looks almost like rocks in his in his in his in his pants. And he goes, "Scabalabuga, who are you? Who sent you?" Uh, when you grab for, uh, yeah. I assume, is your weapon. My, like, dagger. Your dagger. Yes. Uh, he he kind of looks back and goes, I found a bird. Who's you? And the one that's up there that spit the, the thing out pulls out what appears to be like a very crude short sword. Like it looks like it would probably break. Uh, like it's rusted over. Yeah. It would probably break if it hit something that was very hard. Who's you? My name is Octavius, and I, um, I was just wandering the tunnels, and then your friend here just startled me, and I don't want to kill you. Oh, so, God, I want no kill, no kill. Yeah, I don't want to kill anybody. Please dig. Why? Find. Find yes. what? Find, um, uh, 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 and he digs in his pocket, and he brings out what looks like, uh, it looks like a rock, but it has interesting, like, pink quartz striations oh. in it. And he's like, Shiny! <laughs> oh. Ah, mm, the gift? Uh, take. Have gift. No. 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 Why should you not stab? No I stab. Give I'm gift. not going to stab anybody. No stab. Give gift. See? See? Ooh. Oh, all right. Give. Yeah. Here. Yeah, yeah. Just one. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, and do you let go of him? Like, you yeah. push off the wall? He seems to visibly relax. Ha! <laughs> I'm going to go to not much, no. Come on, no. So I can't understand what you guys are saying, but I'm assuming it's really nice. He puts the broken, rusted, yeah. curved shorts. I away. told him to put a uh, put stabby way. Oh, oh my god! I... You help us find more. Oh, yes. this is what you're looking for. Uh, mm, mm, eh. uh, uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, uh, this one, and he pulls out, and it, it, it shines like silver. This. Uh, uh, oh, um, would I know? Oh, what? Oh, when? uh, uh, and he puts that one down on the ground in front of him, and he pulls out yeah, another one. He grabs it and puts it. Yeah, <laughs> and he pulls out another one, and he goes, oh, and what he pulls out is a, a very tiny sliver of obsidian. Yes. Oh no 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 no! Do you know what that is? Uh, shiny. Uh, 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 sharp! Black rock. Black rock, good! Black rock cursed. What? Ow! Oh, what? Uh, he's gonna roll. Uh, roll deception. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's gonna roll inside there. Uh, 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 uh. 
Oh man, I don't know why I picked the strawberry dice. They're way to to to, to fail. <laughs> Sorry. Jenny. No, no, it's great. Heck no. Um, you said pers. What is it? Deception. Deception. Mm -hmm. Oh no! What did I do? That is seven. Seven. Sure. Uh, he goes. Uh, 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 curse! Oh no! Oh, and he, the, he seems to kick dirt on the one that he just what hit. What kind of curse? What kind of curse? I. Um. Uh, I've heard stories about it. Stories from who? Ooh, rock like story. Ro oh, you rock. like rock stories? Uh, snack. There's a rock. Now you give her name. Oh, oh. I I didn't mean to. Octavius. She give name. That means friend now. What? Friend now. She no trade. You oh. give, she no give. I'm oh. a boy. By he, the way, he, he, oh, oh. I'm a boy. Yeah. It is a it's me, me, boy. He no give. He no, he no give. We give, you give back. Yes. Oh, oh, you want something? Yeah. Okay. Um, give me one second. Oh boy. You have all of the equipment that's on you. Everything is yeah. on you. Oh, perfect. Oh, good, good, good. And I'm gonna give. This you... take too long. You give no, now. Here's a bell. <gasps> and you hear him go. Ding 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 ding! Oh, 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 oh. Uh, snack! He takes it. No, not eat. Ring. Oh. Jangle. Sound. Yeah. Yeah. What for? For uh, well, I like to do it when um, I'm trying to distract someone. Like, so you're walking, you're doing stuff. They're walking over there. You want them to think that you are over there. You throw the bell. And it jiggles. Ding, ding, ding. Wait, uh, you give you give to rock to distract? No, just so you have that, so you could distract. I don't have it. You have it. He pockets it regardless. Oh, you can, now you can clearly tell that he doesn't understand the concept. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you're talking tactics. Tactics. And these guys have zero. No, got it. Got it. <laughs> uh, now. Right. What's your name? Friend. So you're rock. 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 What's your name? Snack. <laughs> Snack? See, friend now! Snack, okay. I can help you find um, the peak one and the silver one. I really want black rock. Mm. What kind of curse? Say again. Long ago, I heard that someone found part of the black rock, and all of a sudden, they, they started having these nightmares. These nightmares of a black rock figure creeping and crawling into their sleep. And all of a sudden, when they awoke, they had started to become blackened, much like the obsidian. If you don't believe me, I'll show you. And I'll show a tiniest bit of my... Um... Uh, oh, yeah. Rock, as soon as you show that black... Uh, part of your arm that's burned yeah and it looks uh, when you reveal it mm -hmm. it looks like a hand wrapped around your arm and left a, a black burn mark on mm -hmm. your wing that's what it looks like uh and he sees that and he goes ah, 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 rock curse no and he runs down no! further into the into the the tunnel yeah. disappearing beyond your dark vision yeah. and i i would i would argue that snack would be torn between dealing with you and getting more money or or treasure out of yeah. you and his friend but then after he gets like a good you know like once he loses sight of him he just gets frustrated and then starts running after him as well to catch up with his friend. You can tell that Rock is the bronze of uh -huh. these two yeah, yeah, and yeah. Snack appears to be the brains. <laughs> and by that, I mean, he's still dumb. <laughs> but is he's just not as dumb. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! So I uh, I chase. I, I run fall after them. Follow yeah. after them. They're going, going away going. from your territory, deeper towards where uh, other parts of the okay. obsidian veins are, but away from the one that you just saw. And as you're running away from your home, away from okay. your home. Okay. As you're running after them, these goblins are fast. They are <gasps> fast. Um, 
And They're used to running in caves, right? Yeah, uh, and that you you hear him as he as he uh, breaks distance from you down the hall. Oh, 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 no, no, don't want to burn, don't want to. And then you hear it stop. And then you hear ah, fire, 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 and he's and, and all as you're running past him, rock starts to come towards you and barrels past you. Make an acrobatics check. Oh no, rock. Oh, please be okay. Well, it would be Snack first and then Rock. Yeah, that's right. Well, he runs past Snack. Oh, okay. Um, he runs, he barrels past Snack. Got it. I rolled a six. This is a six? three. Six? Yeah. Uh, I rolled a seven. Uh, so he seems to tumble over you, uh-huh. lands a little bit on it, and picks yeah. himself up, and, and begins to b- dart back to the where he came from. So uh, Snack, at this point, looks at what's happening there, what are you so afraid of? And then turns around and you just see fire coming, pouring down the tunnel at all three of you. And just when I mean fire, it just looks like a river of fire pouring down the tunnel your direction. Does it look like lava fire or is no. it? Oh, this is weird then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super weird. Yes. Oh boy. Um, Make a uh, perception check. Okay. Okay. What? Okay, these dice are yeah. many <laughs> some, new dice. Some great dice you got there. Yeah, they are ruining my life. Um, but that is a um, good uh five. Okay, so the goblins screaming mm-hmm, and the mm-hmm. roar of the fire is all you hear right now. But I will give you this: the fire is also sucking up all of the oxygen in this tunnel, oh. and so you feel the heat coming towards you as it's essentially crawling its way up the tunnel towards you. The heat is blowing towards you, and yeah. you start to feel almost like pressure, back pressure. Yeah. Kind of like uh, the, the heat blows past you, and then a vacuum sort of starts oh, to so pull it's sucking you in. Me it feels that way. It's not strong okay. enough to make you move, but, but that. you can feel that pressure change. You know that if you don't get out of this tunnel quick, yeah. you're going to be completely engulfed by this. Yes. Um I, I know that I'm kind of tangled up with Rock right now. I'm going to do my best to um, grab them because um, I'm not sure the size in relation, like if we're the same size or we're... About the same size. Yeah. Right? Okay, that's what I was thinking too. Um, and Rock is uh, running towards now, back yeah, towards they're your both territory. Oh, they yeah, both. Okay. They pass you and are scrambling. So I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to bolt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as you start to run down the tunnel, the tunnels begin to shake. Uh, and make a dexterity saving throw. Oh no. You too, Snack. Oh. That's a natural one. So was Rock. Oh, then, and that's how I well, died. Snack got a 15. <laughs> oh, that's uh, good Snack. So you, you're, catching up to, you're catching up to, um, to Rock uh-huh. just as the dirt around the obsidian that you saw before begins to crumble in on and enclose the escape from the fire towards your territory. Uh, and you can see that the obsidian vein there now where the, the has exposed even more. And you start to see, again, in your dark vision, you see a, a what looks like a bright light start to even deeper in the obsidian. It begins to form in just as you saw it before. Snack and rock, uh, because the exit that they were trying to get to, where they're running from, just turn and they're guessing where the surface is, and you see them trying to dig their way up. out, up and out. Um, they are not; they do not burrow like you do, though. They're mm-hmm. doing it with their bare hands, so it's pretty slow going. Yeah, I'm gonna start digging. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to dig to the surface for um, all of us. Uh, as you begin to dig upward, uh, you know you're you're. This is your territory. It's yeah. like flying, but uh, you begin digging. Just as you begin to, to start to drop some of the dirt that's above you, you can see now a lightning shape appears in the entirety of this large piece of obsidian, uh, starting from the center and then shooting out to the edges of it. Again, you're in your dark vision, so you can't see what color it is, but it seems very similar, just in larger effect now than the previous time you saw it. Uh, and the, the heat begins to increase uh, dramatically as you, as you begin to dig upward. Uh, you you begin digging upward, right. uh, and you're making progress, but it's dumping dirt on top of rock and snack that aren't smart enough to realize that they can't stand right underneath you and follow you in the tunnel. Uh, and so they f- fall to the ground and start... <coughs> ah, hey, no, no, no! <coughs> uh, and then fire seems to overtake them, 
uh, as you look downward uh, and a, a hand comes and grabs the obsidian. You see, as you're digging upward, looking downward at this, this hand, of the, this hand, uh, fire hand, grabs the chunk of the obsidian and pulls it out of the wall. Uh, in, the whole thing engrossing in fire. And as it does, it, it you see this hand stamp it on the, uh, where rock and snack were. And a, what looks like a spear of obsidian uh, appears just below you. Uh, and a lance. A, a lance. Whoa. A large spear lance uh, yeah. of obsidian. Um, now perfectly black. And you notice that the hand looks very familiar as if it once wrapped around your arm and burned it. Also, make a perception check, because there's a lot going on right now. Oh yep. my god. I'm curious if you're going to see this or not. Oh, it's cocked, but we'll take it. Well, it's cocked, we roll. Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not my day, y'all. <laughs> okay. Well, with the fire light, lighting um, these up. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So it's very, it's very specific. So the... Goblins, when they become immolated, uh -huh. they burn up completely. There's no bone. Oh my there's gosh. no flesh. There's no skin. The fire is so intense that they're literally disintegrated. My new friends. Yeah. What? No. And the arm that's holding on to this uh, lance, uh -huh. the lance bursts into flames, and the, the hand and the arm start to pull the whole lance and the rock and the earth around it up uh, out of the ground, which creates an opening for you to also come out if you want to burrow out. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, seeing all of that, I think that this is the first time that Otto has experienced actual, like not actual danger, but danger to this magnitude. Mm -hmm, right. Um, so I am just going to, with seeing that opening, um, just burst out where I need to, to for safety. As you do that, you hear, uh, coming from the hole that you're burning away from, you hear, <laughs> It's clearly a language you don't understand. It sounds similar to the language you heard before when you first ran into this creature. Uh, but you see its hand and a, and a very large head with blazing red eyes encased in what looks like an obsidian helm look up at you. Uh, it's clearly very large, this thing that is chasing after you. Mm -hmm. And you hear in your head, in Ignin, help me find them. Do my bidding. And just as you are bursting, burrowing as fast as you can out of the dirt into the surface, a wall of fire wraps around you no! in a circle. And just as you're bursting <laughs> into the air, you are immolated into ash and dust and everything goes white. And that is the end of your session zero. Welcome to the team. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> My God. I was, I was gonna say she should probably make some kind of save versus being frightened, but I kind of feel like you were already there. So. Well, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so oh, yeah. we just a little bit uh, forthcoming with our audience. Mm -hmm. You do have the background trait of a haunted one, and you were facing the thing that made you a haunted one. Yes. So I made it that there was no save because yeah. this is, this is my fear. greatest fear. There's yeah. no, f at this point, there's no saving from that, what you just experienced, because it's so intense. So. <gasps> yeah, welcome. Hell yeah, my god. <laughs> <laughs>
she's she's kind of a gangly teenager. Uh, got kind of permanent mats in her hair. Never really looks in the mirror. Not really interested in doing that. Bit shy. Kind of an outcast. Walks with a, a yeah, just a bit of a downward facing personality. Uh, curious though. Very curious. Interested in life, but also wary. Again, growing up with dwarves has learned to be a little bit suspicious of folks outside of... Well, your dwarves are very... They're suspicious themselves by right. nature. So, yeah. So it makes sense that you would... So she's picked that up. Them. Yeah. Um, you're also an alpine or Sakam, right? Which mm-hmm. uh, means yeah. you're closely re- related to black bears. Yeah. Right? So, um, well, great. So you find yourself in the uh, a, a small makeshift dwarven uh, town um, called Thurok. Um, it's al- almost like a settlement. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, as you know, when you were five, you were found, uh, and you were found by a group of, a clan of dwarves, a couple of clans of dwarves, uh, migrating south. So, you're familiar with that the dwarves left uh, the Anatox Basin a while ago. Okay. Um, and that's back when you were born. So, when you were five, you're old, how old now? I'm like uh, 18. So, okay. it's, been, it's been 13 years uh, since they have migrated to this location. Um, they brought some stones with them. The houses are uh, dwarven of nature, with their foundations made of stone from the Anatox Basin, um, and uh, since then have been uh, have been um, enhanced with wood and trees from inside the elderberry uh, wilds. Yeah, the geography, just so you know, because you know this area since you're from there yeah. and you're a druid, so you have ventured around. Yeah, the geography is that the uh, Mavros Mountains are to the north and they're massive. Then there's the Anahor Cliffs, which is actually where the Dwarven clans came from. They lived inside of those cliffs, cool. inside of a huge Dwarven town. It was all in the rock underground. That got flooded by the Anatox Basin. Nobody knows why, not even the Dwarves, but that forced them out. It's like, it's like okay. gophers in a hole getting mm-hmm. washed out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they took everything they could uh, when this happened. And it was pretty traumatic. And they moved down the Anatox Basin, down the Nala River, into this uh, well, naturally well-fortified area where there's water almost all around them so that okay. they could feel like they could defend themselves if necessary. But since then, they built a bridge over the Nala River, which is a huge feat of construction. And they built a wooden palisade in between the Linya River and the Nala River, or the Linya Pond and the Nala River, so that there is essentially either water or wall or bridge on all sides of Thurok. Okay. Yeah? Cool. There is one uh, large wooden palisade that's been built, and that is uh, essentially just keeps the area that is not protected by any sort of water or uh, uh, harder to get in. You can't just run in. It, you have to make a way way through the palisade to get there. Yeah. Um, and that on the other side of that is the Elderberry Wilds, mm-hmm. which is where they found you. And just as a, a little bit of lore, the, the dwarves respect slash fear the Elderberry Wilds because the Elderberry Wilds is like... Uh, a, a fantasy overgrown forest. So imagine massive trees, yeah. massive ferns. filled with uh, filled with elderberries that you have yeah. been using to help keep them alive. Right. Um, uh, uh, filled with brambles. It's it's very thick, and it's often that people have gone missing. Uh, if you get lost, uh, yeah. very easily, exactly. very easily get lost in these yeah. woods. Uh, yeah. And it's happened a few times since you've you've yeah. been here. Yeah, and you're one of the only ones that uh, feels comfortable going out into those woods because you are naturally built for the woods, whereas these dwarves are not. Right. Yeah. They tend to stick to... It's like fish out of water in Mm -hmm. a real way, right? They're Mm -hmm. stone mountain dwarves that are now forced to live in the forest. Right. Um, So you, despite uh, maybe the chieftain not liking you so much all the time and suspicious of you and your kind... Um, they seem to be uh, reliant on you in a real way. Right. Um, you're helping them navigate the woods, bringing food and game out of there. Um, you've been very helpful. Uh, and today is a day like any other. Uh, you 
You are built into uh, usually two to four uh, person scouting parties. Um, everyone is a warrior uh, by design, has to, to survive in these areas. Everyone has to learn to fight, and everyone has. Um, so even your father, Jam, who is a clothier by trade, mm -hmm. um, a very, very talented clothier by mm -hmm. trade, uh, is also a somewhat of a warrior. Maybe not as good as some of the others in the clan, but certainly able to keep his own. Yeah. And, and you find yourself uh, returning from a quick morning breakfast in the in the forest with some honey, maybe mm -hmm. from one of your one of the uh, uh, nests nearby, mm -hmm. and some berries that you're now bringing to him to eat in the morning. Uh, and as you enter. Uh, the familiar smells and sounds of, of the home that you've made for 13 years with Jim um, uh, flood your nostrils. Uh, and in front of you um, is your... Bi Do you call him father? Uh, just Jam. Jam. So your Jam. He's your Jam. <laughs> he's my Jam. You're, he's your Jam. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, and as you enter the... As you duck... Uh, into the doorway and enter and fill this uh, entryway. Uh, Jam can see, uh, you can see him busily working on a table. Um, he's a sh smaller dwarf, yeah. so you know, five foot one, five foot two, uh, but he's working frantically with the skill of many, many decades of practice. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a little bit older. A little yeah. bit older. Yeah. Uh, very, very skilled. Uh, he's got a bit of a sadness to him and has since you've met him. Um, he doesn't really talk about what happened before the Anatox Basin. Anytime you've ever brought it up, he kind of changes. It's more about taking care of you and making sure that you um, can survive and, and, and become a, a good member of society. Yeah. Um, and as you enter, uh, sure enough, he, he, uh, you see him working. Um, oh, oh uh, I didn't know you'd be back so quickly. I uh, got breakfast. Oh, uh, shoot. Uh, just a moment. And he quickly shoved something down up underneath. Make the a perception check. Okay. Uh. <laughs> he shoves it into the bag okay. way before you can even okay. see. Uh, Everyone's been rolling terribly. I was going to say, do I even need to look at my skill? No, no, no you don't. Uh, uh, he, he, he's able to, to hide uh, what it is that he had in his hands from you. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, here. Let Berries, me fish. Uh, sure, sure, sure. He takes both of them and he walks over to there's like a basin and he there's some clothes that are literally dying, like being dyed mm -hmm. in one of the basins. So he looks around and then he puts the fish on a hook that's over the top of the basin and then he takes the berries and he takes some clean water and starts washing them off. Did you already eat some of these? Well. Just a little, just a little bit on the way back. <laughs> and Jam can clearly see that on her face is smeared <laughs> elderberry juice. Uh, it kind of hides, but you, he can yeah. see it as right. soon as he questions her. Why'd you? I mean, not not much. Oh it, no, it's fine. It, this is a, this is a great uh, uh, catch, so to speak. That's the catch. That's right. Yeah, I know. It, forgive me. I my mind's elsewhere. Uh, I'll just be putting these in a jar and saving them for later. I already ate some black bread. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's nice to see you. You know your um, special day is coming up. My ad adoption day? I suppose you could call it that. Or it was the day we found you. Found, well, I guess adoption's a big word for that. You didn't really <laughs> tell me that day, but... We don't really have a, a dwarven word for adoption. It's if you're in the clan, you're in the clan. Otherwise, you're an outsider. And... My insider day. Right, exactly. Tell that to Leather Sword. Scratch, are you in there? Yeah. The familiar voice of your best friend Poppy uh, comes from outside. Yeah, Poppy, come in. Oh, I I've just come to gather you because. It's time for our scouting party to go talk to, um, you know, Chieftain Leathersword. You, I know he doesn't like you that much, well, but we've got to do our business. Can we confirm that he doesn't like me, or it, it just like well, we all get the feeling he I'm like not you. alone? It's just, it's just that you have to understand the dwarven way is to not trust outsiders unless it's earned. I know. You're He's always... also really old, not like you and I. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Well, we should probably go if he's oh, yes. summoning us. They were very clear, uh, clearly uh, wanted us to show up as soon as possible. Did he say why? I, I, we're supposed to be scouting, but I didn't know where. He did not say. We're going out today. Uh, apparently, well, that's what I'm hearing. She just bring. got back. I, I, I don't make the rules, John. I'm just <sighs> the messenger here. All right, well, I was going to save this, but I figured I might as well get it out of the way now, if you don't mind. Do I need to step out? Is no, this a, no. Is it, oh, okay. I, just, I want to be a, pl- a polite. That's he all. He reaches underneath the bed, and he pulls out what appears to be some kind of vestment. And by vestment, it's not like a religious vestment, but it's like a, like a smock or a, a vest, but it drapes from your neck all the way down to, uh, it's big, all the way down to past your waist. But it's beautiful. It's black as night. So he obviously had to dye this thing 10 times to be able to get it that dark. But there's like a, like a, uh, like an off blue, like it's so black, it's almost blue. And then he sewed in little white rocks, probably pebbles from the Nala River. And each of those rocks glimmers as he holds it up in the light and they glimmer like stars. I made this for you. Special. And, and Poppy goes, oh, goodness. You've really outdone yourself this time, John. Well, I, I wanted to try something new uh, in honor of, you know, how long she's been with us. And, and Why so. are you standing there? Put it on. Well, I just, no one's ever made me something so nice before. Uh, it, well, yeah, I, I knew your measurements, so it, it was no bother. Here, I'll help you put it on her. Sir. Sure. I was wondering when you tucked me in, you were doing it so tight like that. <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to give it away, but I suppose I... I didn't I did. suspect anything. I just thought you were doing one of the things you do. Right, right. Well, you know, sooner... Oh, thank you, to... Jim. And, and You're she's welcome. just going to go hoard and give you a huge bear hug. He, he immediately gets kind of... Faclemt, like you know, he's not used to a, like yeah. a lot of physical. And it's clear when you hug him, like she picks you up a oh, little yeah. bit off the ground, and yeah. his legs start to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh! You know, oh. I don't just give these out. No, I, I remember. Oh, I know. Uh, You're oh. so strong, Scratch. Mm. Let's get this on you. It looks so pretty. Hey, I see that. Uh, let, let's get this on you, and oh. Poppy uh, helps you uh, put on your vest. Yeah, you have like a dirty smock right. on that yeah. you don't mind getting trashed out in the Elderberry Wilds. This is obviously going to be like the nicest thing you yeah. ever owned. She ever. unabashedly just takes the smock off. <laughs> oh, well, oh, I, um, oh, oh, it's been a while. And, uh, Poppy helps uh, dress you uh, and, and t- uh, tucks the smock in your belt uh, and, and says, oh, all right, I think we should go now. Um, we don't want to be late. He's already oh, we, we've little... taken too much time. Do you think go. now that I have, you know, nicer clothes and look, you know, Dor- Dorvin, that Leather Sword might respect me? I mean, I, I, I don't want to say no, because anything's possible, Scratch, you know that. That's true. Yeah. Could change his mind a little bit, I suppose. Yeah, listen, Scratch. I've been, I've been trying to tell you, the rest of us like you a lot. It's just him. I know it's, it's true. And I like you, and I know I don't need everyone's approval, but I just don't know why, you know. I, I try to bring food in for the whole clan. And you do very well without yeah, one you. One of the best gatherers there is. Indeed, without you, would be lost. And a fish. Right. <laughs> Better than any of us. <laughs> I couldn't catch a walleye from a pike. I've seen her do it with her bare hands. I know. <laughs> <laughs> bare hands. <laughs> oh. oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I'm sorry. We I'm need sorry. to go. Yes, oh, I, okay. yes. Let's go. Let's go. And uh, uh, Poppy makes her way out, out of the door and seems to be uh, hurrying quickly. It's not far. It's not that way. It's this <laughs> oh, way. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm so I'm so confused. Uh, Distracted. Distracted is the word. Everyone feels distracted today. Uh, and and she turns around and starts to follow you and Jam towards the, the right. chat. Uh, so you make your way towards the center common house, uh, which is where a lot of it's where the chieftain or the, the the different clans that help run this town yeah. uh, kind of meet and give out their their daily chores. So yeah. we know exactly. Yeah, it, it, this, this is, is normal. It's yeah. every day. Uh, uh, and there's multiple chieftains. It's right. not like there's just one. There's a series of clans that are all being led by different chieftains. But Jam is part of the the, 
the, un, under the guise of Chieftain Leathersword. Jan, what I, is it? I, do, do you think maybe you could get transferred? Transferred? To a different chieftain. Don't say that. Just, maybe, just, I know, but my, my accepted into the clan days coming up, whatever we're going to call it. Clan means blood, right? You can't change your blood. But I don't have your blood. So maybe it's like a loophole. Uh, Poppy looks, <laughs> doesn't know what to say. Sorry, I said uh, she's she's just as you know. Poppy's a, a, an we'll, older dwarf, but young, young enough to. We'll talk later. Okay. Don't worry about it right now. I'm here. Poppy's here. He's just given us our chores. And I got this new garment, so maybe you know. Maybe see. it'd be best if you didn't talk too much when we're in there. Oh, okay. I've got your back, scratch. Always, you know. I know. Um. Uh, and uh, you're having this conversation as you get to the front. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and as, as you're finishing this conversation, um, three other dwarves seem to uh, uh, come out, uh, and you can hear him say, he wants us to go to the scale moors. Right. Well, we're going to have to take as many weapons as right. we can carry. Right. We're also going to have to take some sort of anti-venom. Well, that's for sure. Right? For sure. And they walk on. Um, and Poppy seems to be caught off guard by that as they enter the... And, and as, as we enter, you see uh, uh, Ursula try to make herself look the smallest. Again, having to duck yeah. in because the, the door frames are so yeah. small. She just kind of like bends her knees and also is like... I mean, luckily this is a bigger building. Yeah. So yeah. once she gets inside... Yeah. It's once you're inside, it's yeah. it's pretty tall and it's easier yeah. for you but to stand. But she's trying to like right. be as right. dwarfy as possible. Uh, and as you enter, um, they're sitting on what looks like a, a mostly stone sort of throne... Um, is who you know as Chieftain uh, Leathersword. A long, grayish black beard uh, hangs down from uh, his chin, and it's full of all of the accoutrements that indicate that he's a, a chieftain, a general, yeah. someone who has a lot of war, ex- or uh, excuse me, uh, warrior experience. Yeah. Um, and he and he enters in. And as you enter, he goes, "Oh, great! It's Ursula and her crew." Welcome! You've come for your daily chore, have you? I, uh, uh Chieftain Leathersword, we, we're, we're, uh, happy to, to serve our purpose and to, to give back to the community as, as much as possible. In fact, in fact, Ursula just returned today with three big pike and two handfuls of elderberries, and that's just from this morning. Oh, well, that's good. That's fine. That's fine. And he seems to kind of brush this up uh, right. as if as this this is uh, not important to him. Uh, well, uh, apparently she seems to have decided to dress fancy today as well. Are you better than us, are you, Ursula? No, not at all. Speak up when uh, I talk no, to you. not at all, sir. Yes. Well, fine. I want you out of my sight as quickly as I can. Here's here's your job for the day. I want you to take a trip back up to the Anatox Basin, and I want you to tell me if the if the Anahor Cliffs are still flooded. Now, be careful out there. I don't want you seen. I just want you to see. And then come back and tell me what you've seen. Isn't that kind of dangerous? Aye, that's why there's the three of you. Ursula can handle herself. Look at her. She's tall. She'll be fine. We're all, Poppy's a fighter. We're all going. You're all going, all three. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Uh, I guess I can hold off on what I was working on in the shop. Well, you'll have to. Unless you'd like to send your your child no, by herself. No, 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 of course not. Of right. course not. Well, yes, yes, I'm, Chieftain. Do I'm, you need anything else? I've given you your orders. You have something to say, Ursula? Just saying, I, if it's dangerous, I, I can go by myself. If... No, you shouldn't go by yourself. I'll leave that up to you. Just get it done and come back to me, all right? Poppy grabs her hand and squeezes it. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I'll see you when you return. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome, Jay. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome, Ursula. Poppy? Uh, yes, Dad? Hey, you come back safe, you hear? Yes, sir. Good. Well, go on. He hurriedly gets out. Um, and Poppy uh, looks at you and says, I'm, I'm so sorry. I know, I know he likes you, but I know deep down he likes you. 
makes her enough to send her up there. I... God knows what we're going to find. Well, when I get back, I'll have a talk with him, okay? I'm sorry, Ursula, but I'll go with you. We'll be fine. We'll just stick to the river. If we stick to the river and follow it north, we won't ever have to go in the woods and we'll be fine. All right, well, we should take some some defensive measures. Aye. I'll go get my armor and, and my sword and maybe a crossbow if I can borrow it from a neighbor. All right. I, I'll, I'll go get me war axes and grab me armor. Uh, Ursula, make sure you grab your spear. Yes. Spear. We're going to need it. I always have my dagger. Yeah, great. Uh, and Poppy runs off to her. her, her uh, Jam immediately starts pulling you back to your guys' house. And when he gets back there, normally he's like a pretty, you know, warm, lighthearted guy. But as he's putting on his armor, which he hasn't worn in a long time, like as far as you know, like, Never. Uh, he gets out this dusty set of uh, like brigandine, which makes him look unlike himself. And he takes out a sword and looks at it and kind of uh, cleans it off and a warhammer. And he even takes out a helmet and puts it on. And now he looks like a real tank, like a real warrior. Uh, uh, but there's almost like a, like a thousand mile stare in his eyes as he's putting this on and as he's thinking about what's to come, which you've gone into the elderberry wilds with him before, and he's never had this reaction. Jim. Uh, I, I, uh, what, what is it? Oh, it's, uh, it's nothing. It's just been, uh, it's been a long time since I've been home. Make an insight check. That's, a, that's nine. a nine. Plus, you might have a high wisdom, though. Mm -hmm. One second. Being a, a druid. Mm -hmm. Druid. One second. Oh, doesn't matter. He's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Right. Uh, it, he, it. You can't tell. He's he's clearly not being forthcoming about something, um, but you, you, you kind of shrug it off as... Um, Maybe he's just worried about the danger uh, ahead. Okay. Yeah, he wrote that. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at this point, Poppy. Comes yeah. Back. At this point, uh, Poppy's like, "I'm ready. I've got, I've got my stuff. Great. Uh, do you have food? Oh, what am I thinking?" And he walks over and grabs the fish, and he grabs the jar with the berries in it, stuffs it into his pack. Fine, let's go. Right. I, and I know how to get more food out there. I, I figured we had Ursula. She'd, she'd feed us on our way. Right, but we need to make as much. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, right. It's it's a couple of days' journey, so we're going to take some time. We'll have to hoof it. Yes, we, he, he wants we'll have to us try to, to keep up with her. That's what I was worried about, and it's clearly going to be... We're going to be tired, and she is not. Right. Yeah. All right, well, let's go. This is going to be quite I mean, a I mean, I could carry one of you. I know. Dwarves don't no, like to be that's fine. So I guess I could technically carry both of you, but then. Oh no, no I, we're worse. fine. Yeah, I, I'm fine. Thank you. We're strong. Yeah, okay. and we have the endurance of an ox. Indeed, you you know. Okay. All right. I guess try and keep up. <laughs> Uh, and they start moving, and they're clearly much slower. Cut to a cut scene of Ursula <laughs> just like running like Forrest Gump almost, and then these two dwarves. And, uh, uh, uh. Um, and you're trying. Cl clanging in metal armor. I bet Ursula's not even running. Yeah, She's yeah, just like walking jogging. normal. And uh, 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 uh. Um, you sure you don't want me to carry you? No, no, no we're, fine. we're fine. We're fine. It's good. It's, it's good it for the soul. Builds your berries. stamina. Indeed. Takes a couple he also, she, she also takes mouth. a couple. Um, and the travel is, it's not easy, but it's also not very difficult. Yeah. Um, you're keeping to the banks of the Nala River. And the Nala River so far, uh, it, it can swell during the storm season. And it is about storm season. Um, you can see the clouds hanging in the sky. Um, but they're, they're, they're not very thick. It, it's partly cloudy if there was a forecast. Um, and as you travel uh, north, uh, it's pretty uneventful. Uh, as you go past the woods, um, you you know you've been to Elderberry Woods, but the Elderberry Woods is it's a huge place, as Jared described earlier, um, and it goes. There's wood elves. There's uh, 
snake people, there's halflings, there's gnomes, there's fey creatures, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff in the Elderberry, Elderberry Wilds. Are the, are the creatures within the Elderberry Wilds friendly? The main threat some is are, getting lost? Some or? are, and some are not. Right. Okay. It is, the thing you have to understand about the whole island of Toss is that it is raw, primal nature. So think uncontrolled, very little civilization. There's a couple towns, but they're way to the south. Right. And right now, you're about as close to the north as you can get without being in the frozen lands. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Alpine region. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it takes a couple of days. Um, there's no nothing major. Uh, you know, uh, you hear some things at night. Uh, it's normal in the elderberry woods. You know, yeah. some predator. You definitely around. take take watch. Right, mm -hmm. and there's definitely watches, and you 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 don't necessarily build a large fire at night. You're keeping a low profile. Mm -hmm. um, this is normal. You this kind of stuff you've done new, time and time again. I and, would say that you would notice that Poppy and Jam are on alert at all times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, more so than normal. Have I been to this location that we're headed to? No. I've never been. So, no. But they seem... In fact, at day two, right around day two, you pass uh, right around where you... And Jam even mentions, says, hey, we, right. that this is around where he found... Yeah, we found you on the outskirts of the Elderberry Wilds on the mm -hmm. north side. Well, it's about that day, isn't it? Sure enough. And, and in yeah, fact, sure. uh, as as he thinks about it, it was in fact today right. uh, that is the anniversary of you. Uh, Sorry, I didn't have time to make you a cake or anything. You made me this. True, that's true. It's better than a cake because I'll never eat this. Poppy says, you've got cake. You brought cake. Well, no, I was going to make a cake, oh. but I didn't have time. Well, I got, my, now I'm more excited for cake. Well, we could try to make something with a, what a, was around well, here. Well, maybe we can... Uh, oh, I know. Fish cakes. Oh. oh. I <laughs> takes out the fish that are two days old. I'm sorry, you've been eating on them. So yeah. they're like half eaten. And he starts mashing them down into like little balls. It's like a no-bake cake kind of situation. Well, we can make a fire, right? Yeah, I mean, we've got to keep it small tonight. True, that's true. We should make it very small. Yes. Right. So you, that night, you right. dine on two-day-old fish cake, ham, fried ham fish, cakes, fish cakes. Ham fish cakes. Ham fish cakes. In celebration of your birthday. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, it's it's rough here. It's, it's rough out in the wilds. For you, it feels natural, right? Yeah. This is your natural... Yeah environment but it's it's a rough situation because there's clearly some something that's got these two dwarves as you tr the further and further north you travel the quieter and more solemn they see yeah. and even with like uh, my medium perception check i would be able to notice this. oh like, yeah that's you like, notice yeah. that their solemnness is that's almost they're not hiding it it's not like they're trying to hide it at all right uh okay so where it's in fact when you get to the anatox basin mm -hmm. which is like this big very deep lake to where you couldn't even see down to the, the bottom of it. You don't even think you could swim down to the bottom of this uh, if you could really swim. Um, uh, you 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 get the sense that there's almost like a uh, like a foreboding. In fact, Jam even pulls you aside at one point and says, "You know, we don't have to do this." This is the third day. Yeah. Uh, right about dusk, uh, yeah. you arrive at the Anatox Basin. Well, right. We could just say we didn't see anything and go back. I feel like you both aren't telling me something. You got quiet. And I know I'm not much of a talker, but I still I see it. I see you, you're quiet. And, and Poppy, Poppy, you're always talkative and happy and... and you have something to say about everything, and to be honest, sometimes I don't always want to hear it. But, but no, no offense. It's just I've never, I've never heard someone who could talk about a certain type of bush for so long. To me, you know. I like bushes. I know. I I like nature too. And you taught me about a lot of them. I know. It's just you tell me back to me, and well, then, I, 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 well, I'm appreciative the point. of you. It's the point is what. My point is what is. This, what is, what am I missing? He just points, and as you look across to the lake, 
you can barely make it out because it's getting darker, barely make out these massive doors. But you see that the doors on the side of the Anahor Cliffs have been broken in and the entire Anatox Basin, all of the water, has flooded it. That is why we're here. Nothing's changed. No, nothing's changed, but we do need to get closer. He wanted us to see, but we just keep it a Didn't low profile. Didn't he just want us to see if it was still flooded? No, we're too far. I can't see very well from here. He wants to know if we can salvage anything. That's what he really wants to know. But it's not safe. That's why he told us to stay and we're not to be seen. Well, there's no tree line along this lake. Um, Poppy starts uh, taking off her armor. So does Jan. Are we going to go swimming in the lake? No, oh, no. No, we're just going to travel closer to the to no, the doors. No noise. None. Okay, I can be quiet in the woods. Well, you don't want wearing armor, so you'll be fine. Uh, she finishes uh, and hides her armor in, under a clearing, uh, just uh, in a bush near the edge of the forest. Ursula we just moves around in her new garment to see if it's loud or not. No, I mean, it sounds no, pretty not silent not to you. Yeah, it's cloth. It's not like it's armor or anything. Right. Yeah. Uh, you also notice that the uh, sky above the Mavros Mountains is starting to, even though it's getting dark, it's starting to light up with various colors. Uh, and you can see the moon... Uh, it's just beginning to crest over the, the top of the uh, Mavros. Is this normal, the different colors? This is something you haven't seen before, really. Uh, it, and it's it's basically an aurora borealis uh, is a beginning to peer in the sky. It's not super clear yet, um, but you're, I mean, you naturally kind of know the stars a little. And you yeah. know that as it gets darker, it'll get more colorful. And even provide you a little bit of yeah. light. It's also not normally this clear. Right. It's right. very vibrant and very, very clear. clear. Ursula is like nervous with everything, but also very fascinated by that. You definitely feel yourself getting drawn in, being a circle of the stars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. You almost lose yourself. Um, and you hear Poppy's scratch? Uh, Did uh, you hear me? Sorry, no, what? I, I said, are you ready to go? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. But take my lead. Uh, and she gets close to the water, but keeps her distance from the actual edge, yeah. trying to use the natural vegetation to kind of keep her profile real low, and she sinks, slinks real right. low. And you're outside of the Elderberry Wilds at this point, so you see all the big trees are behind you, so you're really trying to, like, stay low right. to the ground and, well, and sneak. I think even though I stand up, I will go yeah. kind of bare yeah. position sure, and... Right. Uh, uh, make a oh. stealth check. I'm gonna make one yep. for true. Yeah. Oh, uh, not too bad. I rolled a six and a nine. It, it was a fourteen, and it fell over to a six. <laughs> well, now it's a eight. An eight. Um, as you, as your track, what was yours? Uh, thirteen plus whatever his right, thing right. is, so, and he's not wearing armor. So um, yeah, and Poppy, like fifteen. Poppy and and Jam seem to be. Pretty good at this. They've they've clearly done this before. Uh, and you, though you're on your uh, on your all fours, you're still kind of tall even when you're doing that. And it's clear that you're speaking peeking. Yeah. You know, parts of you are peeking up over uh, the grass. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it, and you travel this way for a couple of hours, uh, and it's grueling, right? It's mm -hmm. Poppy and Jam are clearly this almost belly crawling yeah. and it's it's taxing on them but they're able to continue to do it again their dwarven endurance kicking in um, and as you get closer and this and the the the, the light of uh, the final rays of sunshine as they dim and the moon rises um, you can see that this the, that that aurora borealis the colors in the skies and the stars that just started to to uh, appear when you first arrived now become this deep glittering gl glittering uh, gradient of blue and green and, and and yellow and silver as it it sort of waves in the sky it's very very beautiful uh, and you can see that around the moon the stars begin to poke out even beyond the moon's brightness um, and uh, make a perception check you do no yay okay, that's better. 
Nineteen. As your eyes are scanning over the Anahor Cliffs and and even beyond that to the Ma- to the Mavros Mountain, um, something glittering catches your eye at the base where the doors are, uh, and as you follow that because you're fascinated by glittering things, it's almost like a star in, in closer to the to the basin. Uh, you see a large uh, muddy creature. Uh, pull itself out of the door and step into the moonlight. And you notice that something in it or on it is glittering. Um, but before you get a good view, it it moves into the water and disappears. It's big. It's big. Like massive. Big, huge dwarven double doors. And it reaches out with two hands on either side and pulls itself through, up, across, and then down. 15, the 20 feet at your best, yeah. tall at your best Poppy guess. I, uh, you and Poppy says, I, see, I saw it. I see what? What, what did you see? see? There, there, look. What, what did you see? see? You can see the glittering in the distance. It's gone now. It's it went under. And you uh, clearly, Jam sees a very gone. large yeah. ripple uh, in the basin. We should go. We've we've got to get closer. We've got to make sure that we can see what it is. It's not safe. Jam, I know he will be angry. It'll be worse if we don't. What? The chieftain will... Dad, he'll, he'll be angry if we don't give a good... Especially, we saw something. All right. All right. We'll go up to the edge of the lake. All right. But uh, no closer. Okay. Uh, We're and not going inside. I, I, fine. We won't go inside. Um... And Poppy leaves you closer, uh, closer and closer. Um, as the mountain starts to get closer to the Anna, Anna, uh, the basin, um, Poppy stops because she runs out of land. Right. Otherwise, she's going to start getting into the lake. Um, and and she sits there and waits, and she makes no noise, doesn't even risk. What does you see? It's, it's like a, a mud, a big blob of mud, huge, big, the, bigger than the doors. Make a perception check, both of you. Oh, not too bad. Poppy goes there. Nine. Poppy says there. Uh, yeah. And and Jam, you see it this time. Uh, out of the water comes this gigantic man form. Uh, it's it's almost featureless. It does have what looks a little bit like a face, but it's it's hard to see even in the in the bright moonlight. And it 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 sort of rises out of the Anatok Basin. That gets it, right in front of us. Uh, it, it's it's probably. 90 feet away. Oh, okay. It's like 90 feet away from you. Is it and moving quickly? It, it's moving into the... It, it coming out of the water, causing a ripple, and moving into the doors. So you see it reach its hands in the doors and stop, and then turn in your direction. Everybody get down. It drops its hand, uh, hands out of the... and turns to you, and sinks into the mud in as it moves in your direction. Oh, Run! So- Run! Poppy says, run! And Poppy does not hide and begins running as fast as she can. Uh, As you're running, uh, Ursula, you look behind you and you see the mud creature now much closer to you than it was before rise out of the mud and seem to move especially fast. Uh, Make a wisdom check. How far are we from the woods line, the tree line? The tree line? Oh, a ways. Yeah, a good ways. Because you guys went all the way up to the top of the lake. Which is where the animal probably are. probably a good hour run. Yeah, to the edge of the forest. What was your wisdom check? Well, I got a nineteen plus whatever. Um, I mean plus nineteen five. plus yeah, five. Yeah, so twenty four. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it as soon as it rises out of the mud and where it's at, it has moved faster when it sank in than it was when it first started to move towards you, it's going to catch you. Uh, and what you see in the corner of your eyes is that that glowing um, uh, aurora borealis is even brighter than it was before. And it, almost to the point of where it's starting to uh, cast shade on the ground as if it's bright like the sun. Um, and as you look up, running for your life, uh, hearing Jam, so come on, come on, and, and Poppy, we've got to make it go faster, go faster. Um, uh, the stars and the moon begin to shine and stars seem to fall uh, in a, gl- in, in, sparkling tails fall to the ground uh, and then zoom towards you. A bunch of them seem to be falling from this and begin wrapping themselves around you in wind blowing up into your in, in your head. And 
as your joints begin to glow like they, like you have experienced them before from your druidic abilities. And as they glow, your vision uh, begins to fill with white light. And just as it all goes white, you hear Poppy say, Ursula, where are you? Where'd you go? Ursula, Bobby? Bobby? scratch! Bobby! Scratch! And everything goes white. That is your session zero. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, so right? crazy. Crazy. So uh, I will also, uh, since we didn't do it while we were there, I'll give you one last um, uh, nature check. Make a nature check. Okay. Come on, nature. Oh my God. Uh, as far as it doesn't matter, the, whatever yeah, it is. The, 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 the mud person, the, the only thing you can think of, it's a mud man. Mud man. Mud man. We'll think mud think man. like, a, like a, a giant mud, mud man, man, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. 20 feet tall. The biggest the biggest creature you've seen inside of the Elderberry Wilds would be like an owl bear, right. which is the size of a really large bear. Yeah. This is even bigger. I'm used that. to being one of the yeah. biggest things yes. around. Yeah. And, and it's and easily double your size. Yeah. And the glittering things that were stuck inside of it, that were that were shining and glittering, were gone when it reappeared up out of the lake. Those things. That glittering, shiny Got part it. of it was missing after it came out of the lake. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good job. Cool. Good job. Well good done. job. <laughs> I mean, I didn't roll well, but other than that. I, I, yeah, you didn't roll well. No one, no one has. has. <laughs>